Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Welcome to Muslim Skeptic Live. I'm here with a very special guest, Mr. Owen Benjamin. Many of you may know him. You might have seen him interviewed by other Muslims, such as Eddie on The Dean Show. And we've talked about him, actually, I've talked about him on this channel before because he's said a lot of great things about Islam, saying that he had wrong views about Islam before, but then he saw the error of his ways, that Islam is right, quote unquote, right about many things. So I'm very happy to have you on, Owen. Thanks for Yeah, thanks for having me, man. And I loved our uh, chat about fatherhood and homeschooling and all the all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're just chatting about our kids. So uh, you have four sons. Yeah, yeah. No, and the homeschooling thing. Like it's it's uh it's cool. You know, I got him in uh I got him in a homeschool program, but it's funny seeing my wife like transition into being like a teacher because she th she thought she couldn't do it. And I'm like, You're you're so smart, like you'll you'll crush it. And so all the moms out there, uh that if you think that you can't because you're not a quote unquote teacher, you totally can because no one loves your kid more than their mom, you know, and so to see how how good she is with that now is is pretty mind blowing. Yeah, that's the same thing I was telling my wife when I was convincing her to homeschool when we first yeah. got married. Is that like you've been to public school? You know the quality of teachers. Like <laughs> the average public school teacher is like doesn't really care. Is just phoning in every day, and so it's you're definitely got to be better. Yeah. They're straight up abusive. They're like, I mean, my public school system is one of the reasons I probably have a bit of an edge to me. Like, and I'm working on that, you know, but uh, that real quick to aggression and that quick to like, you know, conflict. I mean, my public school was so nuts looking back, like how much insanity was there. And it's like, I don't want my kids to have those, you know, qualities that I have because, you know, I work on it, but it's still under the surface there all the time. It's like that, that kind of, uh, it's almost like ghetto. It's almost like white ghetto, <laughs> you know, where you're just real quick to be like, what'd you say? You know, and uh, it doesn't help. You know, I'm trying to be more polite as a person. And it shapes your personality, too. So one of the things is that if you have, you know, multiple kids and you're sending them to public school, like they'll be affected personality wise by the teachers that they have, their friends that they have. And then you can often grow apart because your child has been influenced in a certain way. They'll start having views and ideas and just a personality that differs and clashes with your own and with their own siblings. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It causes no, a lot it, of family it, breakdown. And I was trying to explain this about feminism. I'm like, they're going to be led by someone and they're going to be told what to do by someone. It's better. It's the husband than, you know, uh, Facebook and the devil. You know, and so it's like that with kids, too. It's like someone else will take the role of dad and mom if you're not in their lives. And you can still be great parents and have your kids go to school, obviously. But there is an advantage. And I also think it it bonds brothers, too, because like me and my brother at five, we know we like never saw each other anymore because he's in his grade and I'm in my grade. And my kids are always doing stuff together. Like they're always we're doing building projects and, you know, they play the violin together and. And they're just so close, and I'm I'm still close with my brother. But there was, I mean, you're at school and you're not you're just in this little box, and you don't have family around you at all. And so, you know, the influence. And now that I'm starting to realize that there is like a, a very negative agenda uh, to break kids into being kind of crazy. I, I I'm just not letting my kids go to public school. <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. Like, it's just out of the question, even. Even if I wasn't homeschooling, like I didn't have the resources to homeschool, I'd still want to keep them out of public school or any of these kinds of standardized schools that exist in, in the U.S. especially. But even around the world, it's the same system. Yeah. So even if I couldn't like provide, uh, like if I didn't have a wife and I was just a single dad with my kids, I still would take them out of public school just to keep them away from that filth and, you know, mind control. Yeah, better. It'd be better just to take them to work with you. Like, honestly, it's like less damaging. Like, you, yeah, because uh, the purpose of public school is mind control. It is like the Prussian model of making obedient soldiers. And uh, or, you know, and now I think it's to make them like gay. Like, I think that I think the, the big thing now is population reduction and breaking the family. So I don't think it's you know, I don't think it's a coincidence 
that they have that LGBT programming because I I think it just breaks the dem breaks the population, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just uh, go from the beginning and introduce uh, my audience, especially to your beliefs, like because w the conversations that we were engaged in, I've been following you on Twitter for quite a while, um, but uh, my audience might not know some of your beliefs uh, just overall, like you're not a Christian exactly, right? But you do believe in God. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, I just, you know, I don't know what to put myself in because I was raised Catholic and then I realized, and that was, I didn't like that. It's one reason why I have like, a, I'm not into religion, but I think it has to do with my upbringing. And, and we'll talk about that with the idea of hiding the truth and stuff like that, like the kafir uh, word, because it's not like, if I have any resistance to religion, it's not because I hide truth or anything. It's because like growing up, you know, seeing a dude on a cross and saying that's God and the priest that was literally an abuser. It's like, Oh, he's the voice of God. Like it was just brutally bad. And so I'm very uh, skeptical and I can be very suspicious of religion and, and people hiding hypocrisy. Okay. That being said, so then I, I uh, realized that I like, I was more liberal, but not like, not this like satanic liberal, but more just like let everyone do their thing. These people are hypocrites. You know, science is disproving all this stuff. Um, I end up in Hollywood be just because of my ability to do public speech. Uh, my dad was a rhetoric professor. So it wasn't that I have a craving for fame. That's probably why I got out. I could get out, you know, and a lot of people can't because I didn't have that like hole that a lot of those guys have. Like, look at me, you know, I'm just really good at uh writing jokes and telling jokes and uh, the creative process. And so I get relatively successful quick in Hollywood. Like I was on the show Punked and then Adam Sandler started putting me in shows. And then I got several Comedy Central specials. I was like a lead character in a, a sitcom and I'm, you know, touring with Vince Vaughn. And, you know, so I had a very uh, good career. And I didn't realize that how much science got wrong, you know? And then when they started doing the trans kid thing was when um, I, I got exiled from Hollywood because I was fine with everything up until that because I really did believe that gay dudes just like needed love and acceptance, you know? And then they'll be good. You know, it's like, we just got to accept that everyone's born different. And, and, you know, sodomy is just their way of showing love. I really believe that, you know? And so, but when they went for the kids, I knew that it was like evil because there's a five-year-old, right? And so I'm repped at CAA. I have the same agency as like Steven Spielberg and Hillary Clinton. Like I was, I wasn't like A-list, but I was, you know, I was getting six-figure development deals every year, headlining theaters. Like I was that dude, you know? And so I started tweeting about it and my agent and manager, are like, you got, you can't do that. You know, and I was, and then I was like, why? And I was also like going at, um, oh, that's a later story about Lena Dunham and abortion. But I'm like, no, 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 I'm not, this has to happen. Like, I'm not going to be quiet while they're putting little kids on hormone blockers. So they kicked me out. Like they, my agency kicks me out. Uh, I'm blackballed from Hollywood. You know, everyone pretends I'm evil, like overnight, even though I was totally likable, like people like me and then I'm just evil. So I started doing my own thing. Then the neocons scooped me up. You know, you got Ben Shapiro and uh, Stephen Crowder and all those guys. And I, I was drawn to them because I was starting to see that there is metaphysical truth in the world. And we were, and I started believing in God because I had my first son. And I'm like, and then I started realizing NASA and all this stuff. It was, it was an intense time. But then to see Steven Crowder say a prayer before a meal really inspired me or to be able to admit that abortion was wrong and all that. So, so I'm, you know, I'm in that Prager you, you world. They do a video with me and like all this stuff, but I genuinely believe this stuff. And then, you know, cause we bonded over the trans kid thing. And then I find out that all the trans hormones are coming out of Israel. It's It's a pharmaceutical company called Teva pharmaceuticals. So I bring that up because I thought we really wanted to find the truth and help the kids. And I was met with uh, a lot of pushback because, you know, Israel, the greatest ally in human history can never be criticized or boycotted. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, the Jews? And I'm like, so, but you got, you know, 
you guys go at the Muslims because my thing was no sacred cows, you know. So if any Muslims out there have seen me be disrespectful to you in comedy back in the day, it's just because I my belief system was everybody's on the table, black, white, tall, short, any religion. It's like that was my creed because it allowed me to not feel like a hypocrite or a mercenary. You know, it's like everyone can laugh if I don't have a team. As soon as I have a team like Crowder, I'm now a mercenary. It's like his job is to hit the Muslims and to uh, not make fun of the endless things about Jews and Zionism and Israel. And I, and then, so, and then the, the, they had a real issue with me uh, debunking the moon landing and stuff like that. So, so I'm, I'm out of that crew now too. And, you know, I got blackballed to the point where I'm not allowed on Airbnb, PayPal, YouTube, um, you know, I just got kicked off my fourth payment processor like a month and a half ago. Like, I'm not allowed to even rent out theaters. You know, and that's when I started getting a little conspiratorial because, like, I've never even been accused of a misdemeanor. Like, I'm not a criminal. I'm not, you know, pushing degeneracy. I was like, they can just ice you, you know? Especially, and that's the financial system. We'll talk about that. <laughs> and so a lot of Islamic things just kept making more and more sense to me. Am I talking too much? I'm just kidding. No, no. No, okay. we're enjoying it. So, you know, a lot of the things I thought the Muslim, like, because then I started seeing more truth about 9-11 and false flags and the banking system and all that. So I started being like, huh. And, and the thing about me is when I realize I'm wrong, I not only don't double down, I get very apologetic. Because, like, some people, when they realize they're wrong, they're like, censor everybody. Everyone's evil but me. You know, that ego flare. I don't do that at all. So um, I'm like, whoa. And I was really quick how that happened. I was like, man, the Muslims, I'm like, ah, they cover their women because of like porn and, and just the exploitation in public. I'm like, you know, they see the thing about usury. They're like being blamed for stuff they didn't do. And I'm like, Afghanistan, Osama bin Laden wasn't even there. And I'm like putting things together. And so that's, uh, that's kind of where I'm coming from now. And then I, so I got a little dark for a bit where I was like seeing the lies of the world and it was intense. And I, fortunately, I'm out of that. You know, I'm just really grateful and happy because I realized that they can only control like they don't they can only control what they create. And God has given us infinite abundance and like this epic life to, to just so I have like a farm. We homestead. We have our own platforms. You know, we have our, we like just do our own stuff. I realized that they couldn't keep me from touring. If my listeners would be like, yo, you can perform in my barn. You can perform in my warehouse. Like I taped a special in a um, airport hangar and it's great. And my last uh, special I just did called Noble Savage. It's at uh, owenbenjamin.com if anyone wants to check it out. We crowdfunded land so it didn't have any debt. And we built a giant tent and we like, set it up so it looks as good as a Netflix special. It's like, great. The audience is great. And uh, cause I realized that too, like how they uh, control people is through convenience and debt and access to their systems. So that's why I was like, huh, if we all chip in 400 bucks, we can get a piece of land that isn't in debt that they can't force me to license, blah, blah. And so we started and I got ridiculous pushback on that. Like if I, I'm not allowed on YouTube, so most YouTube videos about me are just trolls. So they're like, oh, cult leader, land scam, all this stuff. And I'm like, no, no, no. This is how you get around banking, right? And so over time, people have seen the how valid it is that if a community comes together and they really do pool resources, it's a pain. I'm not going to lie. Like um, it's intense, but, you know, then we start having our own festivals where our community started growing. And, uh, and you know, our own social media app because they kicked me off Twitter. So we, I'm back now. But so then we made our own Bertaria Times. And I think uh, a lot of Muslims would like it because it's like the most censored app. There's like no vulgarity. There's no truth or stuff. Like even stuff that I talk about, I keep from that. Like that's like, that's the castle grounds. You know, it's like what people are growing, what they're, you know, they're looking for. You know, they're like, they're growing their families, their businesses, they're growing gardens, they're homesteading, they're, they're posting how grateful they are, you know? And so I got into this zone where I'm like, I'm not going to complain about anything anymore. I'm just going to try and build 
whatever I like an alternative to anything I don't like. So recently, me and my buddies have been doing an alternative to Saturday Night Live where I literally do a monologue in front of goats, like with a phone. But we like we edit it, put it in a laugh track. We shoot one sketch and just roll it out. And a lot of people are like, this is legitimately funnier than Saturday Night Live because it is. You know, I'm making fun of, uh, you know, I'm making fun of like the sewer Jews and stuff, like stuff no one's touching, but I'm not doing it in a hateful way. It's not like I'm, you know, it's just funny. Like these topics that people won't touch. I'm like, the fact you won't touch that is weakness. Like I'm going to touch that. And so that's that's where I'm at today, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so do you, how this is shocking the system, like how expansive it is and the level of neuroticism there is to just shut you down from anything just because you point out some basic facts that are verifiable and no one can really deny. But just yeah. for pointing that out, there's this entire system that can shut you out of itself, right? You can't yeah. do banking, you can't even you know rent an Airbnb. So how well, I long? I rent out my own house on Airbnb. It was in my wife's name. We had a because I'm like I can get income outside of Hollywood because I, I went back to doing tree work. I was making twenty grand for a show. I'm back to twenty dollars an hour with my brother, and uh, and it was humbling but very beautiful time in my life. It actually showed me. That's why I, like uh, I really respect Ramadan because it like it reminds you like how little you actually have and and who your sustainer really is. You know. And so, uh, but my, it was in my wife's name with her maiden name. Uh, we had a house with a 4.9 star rating that was all that. And that was how we were making an income and Airbnb literally kicked us off for that. They'll shoot like porn in an Airbnb. Like they're not moral people, you know? And it was because of, uh, you know, my quote unquote jokes. And you're right. It's because they're so paranoid. And I used to not understand it, but I'm starting to get it now. Like if people do start knowing stuff, their whole like free money out of thin air kind of falls apart. Like for example, this is a funny story. So my, our last payment processor was solid. Got, gets bought by a French company and then kicks us off, right? And I was like, France, what the, what's going on with France? And now it's coming out that Macron's quote unquote wife it's pretty clear it's it's a trance, right? And even Candace Owens is doing whole things on it now. And when you're sitting on secrets like that and it's starting to become mainstream, you just look down the list. You're like, Owen Benjamin will talk about that. Get it? You know what I mean? <laughs> same yeah. with the vaccine, same with all this stuff. It's like now that the truth is coming out about all this, and I was on that from the first day. I was like, don't close your, close your business. This is not, you know, and... You know, and I got persecuted for that. But it's like, yeah. but once the truth starts coming out, they're like, man, if people find out, and then they have to silence everybody. And I don't live like that. Like when I find out I'm wrong, I'm like, hey, I like I the first thing I want to do is tell everyone because I don't want people to perpetuate things that aren't true. So I'm just like, I was totally wrong about that. This is what it really is. Yeah. I mean, the level of paranoia, one example that's pretty funny. Uh, there was this, uh, have you heard of Graham Hancock, the yeah, archaeologist? Yeah, yeah. And he had this uh, big Netflix uh, documentary, Ancient Apocalypse, I think. And there were basically he questions like the standard narrative of history and human civilization. You know, how far back does human civilization actually go? Maybe it's actually 20,000 years before modern his or standard history has it. And you had articles coming out in mainstream uh, news outlets saying that, you know, this is a dangerous conspiracy theory. And this is, you know, Netflix is perpetuating like this dangerous, these dangerous ideas, extremist ideas. And it's like, really? You can't even like question some basic uh, oh, dude, historical it's nuts, archaeology. Man. That's oh, the yeah. level of like paranoia. Like even that is a threat to their system. Well, it's also a lot of normal people freak out too because they make idols out of this stuff. And I, you know, and that's one thing I'm like, I, I actually do try and respect people's religions. I, in the past, I used to uh, run and gun a little much, but when someone says, this is sacred to me, this is my religion, I'm like, no problem, you know? But when people don't realize what their religion is, like the moon landing, people, you know, you'll have Christians that, you know, you could be like, God's fake. It's a lie. Jesus is a lie. Like you could say anything. And they're like, haha, that's fine. I've heard worse. Like they don't actually care. But if you're like, I don't think we landed on the moon. They're like, 
you need to be stopped. You're you've you're be, you've become unhinged. And I'm just showing evidence, and I'm just like, this looks ridiculous. Like they can't go back, and they and they destroyed their own technology. Like if your friend said that to you, you know, would you believe them? Even if, even if we did go to the moon, isn't it understandable that I would think maybe we didn't? And they're like, oh no, you you you've gone too far. You, it's it, dude, I see that with Bitcoin. Like Bitcoin people treat it as a religion. You know, I'm like. They're like, it'll save us. There won't be any more wars, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, does it sustain you? It Will it stop evil? Really? Oh, is it your God? By any chance, is that your God? Mm -hmm. And so I've noticed that in people. And I think because of my job, like what I do as a comedian, like a sacred cow slaughterhouse, I, uh, I can really run into conflict. And I'm trying to get better at that, like not to just engage and go nuts. You know? Well, what, what do you consider to be sacred? Um the truth How, what is the truth that's that's the question man that's why uh that's i think that was our entire debate about what a kafir is or kafir how do you pronounce it kafir 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 right because there is a difference between someone who is not said a shahada someone who's not in islam and someone who's covering the truth like that is a different thing and so the funny thing is, is when I was told that, like, it's totally fine if someone's like, you're not of our religion. And if you believe your religion is the truth, that makes sense. But that jump to like, you know, because kafir comes apparently in Arabic from like, um, like using dirt and covering a seed. It's like a farmer action. And I'm like, whoa, I don't cover stuff, you know? And so that was our back and forth. It was like, I don't hide the truth, but I'm not... You know, uh, I'm not ascribed to a religion, but one of my Muslim fr friends is like, you're, you are mu, mu Islam because you don't fight against the truth. And, you know, I have Muslim friends that are like, you're Muslim, you just don't know it and all this stuff. I'm like, but I don't know what I'm signing on for. And I don't really like being in religions because people go kind of nuts on me. Like, I don't like I don't have a good personality for it because I was like all about Christianity. I'm seeing the truth about God. I'm seeing the teachings. I'm seeing that we had it all along and we overthought it. And, and the Trinity thing caused so much insanity in my life where I was like, yeah, so who did Jesus pray to then? Like, how can you be yourself and your dad? And everyone's like, <laughs> and I'm like, what? And then, and then I realized, and that's why when you said you're not Christian, it's like, I've been, that's what they kept telling me. They're like, the only thing that makes you Christian is this one thing that you don't agree with. And I'm like, that's nuts. I'm like, I can make a great argument from the New Testament that Jesus and God are separate. And I'm like, look at this, look at it. And, and dude, it was like lights out. And, and a lot of my friends that are Christians are fine with it. They're like, oh, you know, I, I can see the debate and I know you're a good dude and all that. And so it wasn't like they all, rejected me. I mean, most of my friends are Christian, you know, and a lot of them are just awesome human beings, but I can't say I believe something when I don't, or I understand something when I don't, like, I don't understand the Trinity. Like, I don't understand how you can be three things at the same time, but not change shape. Like maybe I have autism, but I'm like, that doesn't make any sense to me. And, uh, and so I do have like a thing about religion, even though I know that there is metaphysical truth. I believe in one God, um, you know, and that's why I shout out Islam a lot, because as I'm reading like Sharia law, I'm like, that's logical. That's logical. That's logical. You know, you, like I don't you know, I haven't read the Quran, but my Muslim friends will like send me like excerpts or memes or something about something we're talking about. And uh and I just resonate with that. I resonate with like the fact that it's hard to pull apart, you know, like I, I think Christianity is hard to pull apart. It's the Trinity. And I think the Trinity is like a, it's like a big claim. The word Trinity doesn't even exist in the Bible. And so, that, and so here's the thing. I know this about me. Like, I know that I'm not good with dogma. So like, I'd rather just live a very productive life and just pursue the truth relentlessly um, and try not to piss everyone off all the time. So that's my answer for my religion, you know? Yeah, I mean, you have this kind of aversion to organized religion 
and maybe that's something that we can talk about because if you're not following because everyone understands that the truth is something greater than himself the truth yeah. and the the universe the creation it's some and god it's something bigger and beyond our human comprehension so in a certain sense like we are limited uh we are limited we have part of the access to the truth but we can never access the whole truth and that's why guidance is needed and you have to have like a model or a path that you follow and to a certain extent like the overall system makes sense the overall system like okay i get it the, there's god he created us and he sent prophets he sent messengers and a way of life i might not understand every single jot and tittle of that organized religion but i'm going to be humble enough epistemologically and psychologically to recognize that you know i don't i can't understand and grasp the whole truth so on when it comes to the jot and tittle or when it comes to the details i'll submit you know that concept of submission and some personality types uh, and in general like that's what liberalism does that's what the western model does it, is it uh trains you to be ultra skeptical and ultra anti-authoritarian when it comes to everything other than you know if, you know yourself yourself and worship of the self and they're the ones who control the self by putting you in public education by uh feeding you this mass media by basically indoctrinating you mind controlling you but you're thinking oh worship thyself worship thyself like um and, and that's actually the satanic dogma right um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna push back. I, I don't worship myself though. Like not not being into organized religion doesn't mean that I worship myself or I reject submission to God. Because my issue with a lot of organized religion is a lot of self righteousness hides in organized religion, and I don't want to be the guy that points it out all the time. Like that flaming soldier thing. Like suicide is haram, right? So it's like to see Muslims be like like say nice things about a guy who literally did one of the worst possible things you can do as a human being. I'm like, isn't it in the Quran that you're not supposed to kill yourself? And then people are like, yeah, but it's for Palestine. I'm like, isn't it in the Quran that you're not supposed to be nationalistic and die for a flag? So, so I'm, my issue isn't like, Oh, I have to worship myself. I don't, I don't, I see a lot of, uh, we call them in Christianity, they're, they're called churchians. And I'm like, oh, how dare you hypocrites, you know? And I don't want to be the guy who calls people hypocrites. I don't want to be the guy that says someone, because I don't know their intention, just like they don't know my intention. That's an Islamic teaching that I love. Is like, uh, you know, if you accuse someone of being a hypocrite, like uh, being a non-believer, one of you is right. You know, and like the punishment for being wrong is really severe. So no, that's that's if you accuse a Muslim of being a non-believer. So someone who is a Muslim and says I'm a Muslim, and then you accuse him of being a non-believer, then you know one of you is not a non-believer. So um, that's the and that's what it's not just in. any person, right? Right. So when people say Mu Islam, like submission to the truth. Uh, submission to God, like uh, Israel means to wrestle with God. And I did a whole video, I don't know if you saw it, about uh, Quran versus Talmud. How the Quran is like, these are the rules, they're logical, these are the laws, they don't change. And the Talmud is, truth is whatever you can argue, you know? Where it's like, truth is subjective and it's whatever you can convince someone it is. That's the binary, right? So when, if someone says you are not submitted to truth, you're not submitted to God. When my life is a series of horrific sacrifices for the truth, like I've actually rejected millions of dollars. I've been called names, all that stuff for truth. And so if someone, just because they go to a mosque and say they're a Muslim, can tell me that I am not submitted to truth because they're Muslim and I'm not, I see an issue. And I'm not going to call it hypocrisy. I'm not going to make a claim, but I do. And I'm not going to pretend I don't where it's like, if, but why if, is that hypocritical? Hypocritical <sighs> to say that, you know, someone's heart or, you know, you know, who's submitted to God and who is not, you know, cause, oh, but there has to be like objective standards, right. Of what the truth yeah, is. Yeah. I do agree with that. Like that's see, 
intellectually, I see the utility for religion and the necessity for it. Like, I'm not, I'm not actually anti-religion. I'm like, okay, so every government has to make a metaphysical claim to like, you know, a theology. Like you can't have, uh, you can't have a society without a religion. You know, I know that, but it's like, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I'm not good at religion because I just see, I just see guys. I'm like, I do submit to truth. I do submit to what I believe is God's will. And I do believe that so far, like what Muhammad, peace be upon him, brought people appears to be very, very good and very logical. And that's great. But like, I, per and, and it, this, is the, this is the irony. I would be lying if I said uh, I didn't have these qualities about myself. Like I do have that. I always have that hesitation of like, but we're all just people, you know, and we can all bend and twist. And to see like, like, cause you know, suicide to me is one of the worst acts you can do. Like, I think uh, if there is a metaphysical Satan's army, suicide is like gathering soul. It's like horrible. And so to see someone set themselves on fire, you know, in support of a nationalistic flag, I see evil. I don't and think he was supporting a nationalistic. That wasn't his cause. It wasn't nationalism. He was his an atheist. Cause was, he was an atheist. Was, yeah, so he, there are many things that we can condemn him for, and I'll happily condemn him for. But the uh, sentiment, when, don't you think it's a positive sentiment to be against no. genocide of Palestinians? That's not a positive sentiment? Oh, is that your binary? So if I'm, if I'm not for what he did, I'm for bombing children? No, no. I, I just want to know, like, you know, is it a positive? Is it a positive sentiment? Like, there no, is, some, there's nothing good that we can say about burning it. your body to death is a pot. What if he got down? And I didn't played? say that the, the burning his body or the suicide is positive. That's not what I'm claiming. I don't I'm saying think, that you can you can praise if, someone for one thing that they did while condemning them for another thing, or praise I, them, praise them for one quality while condemning them for another quality. I'll like say you can this. have that kind of evaluation of people, right? Sure, but I'll say this. I don't know his intention, but if I were to guess, is it bad to guess an intention? Like, what, what do you think of that? Can I tell you what I think the reason he did it was? Go ahead. Okay, I think there's this atheistic Marxist thing about little brown people being persecuted, okay? And I think that they get this death cult mentality where they're like, you know, the white guilt stuff and all the guilt and all this stuff. It's, it's to me, it's void of God right and so that so palestine originally was a nationalistic secular movement against the ottoman empire i again i don't live there i could be wrong but so to set yourself on fire to kill yourself to kill god's creation in support of a flag that originally was created to protest an islamic empire and you burn yourself in, in front of children like that's tr that's so traumatic like what he did because i don't it's like I, and i'm very against the gaza genocide and you know that like you know that and i just think yeah. about what works like what's effective if if i have an achilles heel one of it is my utilitarianism so i'm like okay does it work to set yourself on fire or does that well, maybe that horror? maybe that was his truth Maybe that was his truth. Yeah, Ben Shapiro's got his truth too. Everyone's got their truth, man. I get it. But you disagree. You disagree with, you don't think that it's his truth. You think that it's completely wrong. It's destroying God's creation. Like you have a very this truth. I mean, it's, position so two on gay this. guys. It that, sounds like, no, it no. sounds like organized religion. It sounds so two, like two you gay have guys. a very strict standard when it comes to this issue. And I agree with you. I agree. This is wrong. Committing suicide is wrong. Um, he, if he wanted to protest the uh, genocide of Palestinians, he should have gone about it a better way. I agree with you completely, but you agree that, okay, it doesn't matter what he thinks. It doesn't matter what he actually believes. What he did is completely wrong. It doesn't matter if he thought it was the truth. If he thought it was a, a noble act, it doesn't matter. It's objectively something that is wrong. So you, you do accept that there are these objective standards and we can evaluate others on the basis of that. Of course. I'd, I don't even have a problem with Islam. For me, it's more about religion. I, I, I don't know. It's hard to explain, man. It's an intense conversation. It's like, of course, I believe in objective truth. Like that's, the, of course, you know, but to say that's his truth is actually subjective. So it's like, 
two gay guys sodomizing themselves all afternoon. That's their truth. You know, that's that's Hollywood talk, you know. And so I like Islam because they aren't like Hollywood. So it's like, you know, that's wrong. That's a sin. That's it. Like, we're not changing that's the, thing. the rules. Like, that's the thing. Like, that's the whole uh, discussion about Kafir. Like, if you have objective truth and there is one God and he has like one way of life that he wants people to follow uh, in terms of one religion, then th that means that there are people who follow that objectively and people who don't follow that objectively. So it's like you, you have believers and you have non-believers. That's all, that's all that Kafir means. It's like a non-believer. You don't believe in this system and you're not a part of it. That's all it means. It, uh, the other discussion about like, okay, covering up, what etymo the, what is the etymology of kafir or kufr? That's a separate issue. But the concept of kafir is just distinguishing like who's part of following this truth and who is not a part of it. So you and think like, that like what you're saying about Aaron Bushnell, for example, you're condemning him on the basis of an objective standard, right? So yes. Muslims do the same thing. It's not it's not a hypocritical thing. It's just this is what the truth is. And we're following it. And there are those who don't accept that. And they're not following it. So that that's all that Kafir means. And so you don't think I follow objective truth? If you don't follow Islam, then then no. What if you follow Islam, like just in your life naturally, but you haven't accepted the entirety of the religion? You have to accept the entirety of the religion. That doesn't mean that you personally practice because we all have shortcomings. We can't uh, practice 100%. No one's perfect. Like there's the concept of sin. People can be sinful and that doesn't make them a hypocrite. It just means that they aren't living up to their ideals and God forgives them for that because we are created in this imperfect way. So we make mistakes and we can't follow things, but we still accept that, well, I'm trying my best to submit to God's will, but there is a God's will. And he's clarified that. And he sent a message that's been preserved. And then you follow that uh, to the best of your ability, accepting the whole truth, even though you personally it might be difficult to live up to every single thing. Like we're all like the concept of we're sinners. We're all sinners. Like that's also found in Islam, but it's, I don't see the point that okay, this is hypocrisy. Muslims are hypocrites, or they're self. Uh, you're putting oh. words in my mouth, though. I'm not. I'm not calling. I'm actually very impressed by a lot of Muslims. That's one. Like I actually uh, think a lot of Muslims are naturally truthers. You know, I think that uh, that there is a rigorousness to Islam. That there is a uh, an open uh, to you know to questioning things and work through it and all that to a point where I do understand why you guys think that to deny is to deceive because you're like, what part's wrong? I understand that. But if you want to communicate with like a Western dude or whatever that isn't raised in that culture, imagine you're a ex-Catholic, ex-Hollywood comedian that doesn't read very much. Okay. Like, do you think maybe people don't just jump into religion? You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm also giving some uh, good consulting to Muslims out there that like, when people reject certain things, it's not because they're lying. There's a lot going on. And to be patient is a very good move. And yeah, it's also a lot of idiots, you know, on Twitter, especially <laughs> there are so many idiots, Muslims who are will say nonsense things. They'll, you know, put their foot in their mouths. So if you have a bad experience with them, I'm not surprised. No, I don't hold it. I don't I don't consider that Islam like I'm not. And I don't even say that's Muslims, you know, like I get it. a lot of them are probably IDF guys or like Pajits or something, you know, and uh, some people are and all humans uh, fall short of an ideal and a creed. Like I, I'm totally with you on that. So you establish your creed, you know, what you believe in so that you can be judged based on that. Like I understand. I, I do understand Kafir in a sense where it's like. If you're not in our creed, we don't know how to judge you as much. Like you're either like a simple, you know, I understand that. But it's like the idea that someone on a truth journey who isn't Muslim is hiding something because they might be, again, it's all words. I, I don't. Like submitted to God, submitted to truth. If someone's in a state of that, uh, you know, like, how? I don't know. 
I don't know. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I think it's wrong for someone to just say, "Oh, you, you've actually uh, objectively determined that Islam is the truth in every way, and then you're secretly hiding that." I think that's ridiculous to accuse you of that. Um, yeah, yeah, I hope, yeah, yeah. That's not what I think. That's not what I think. And yeah. anyone who said that, it's a stupid thing to accuse you of. Um, but the idea of, I think, the bigger idea here is objective truth, and in Islam, like the belief. God has exactly as you mentioned earlier in the stream God has created us he's given us all this bounty he's given us all of these blessings that we enjoy and the biggest blessing is, is our children right um, yeah. every day is just full of joy because of our children who who has given us all this except God exactly um so th that uh, requires us to submit to him and to appreciate him and to be grateful to him to thank him but how do we thank him like, do we send him a postcard? Do we send him like a thank you note? Like, what is that gratitude? Well, God tells us what the gratitude is. He says, you know, worship me. Don't associate partners with me. You know, there's one month you need to fast, you know, as devotion and obedience to me. You know, stay away from usury. Stay away from degeneracy. You know, raise your children in the right way. Don't set up idols, you know. Uh, uh, Bro, I mean, like that, that all yeah. sounds great. Yeah. But it require that requires like a level of a submission, right? You have to submit to God as you know, as a token of your gratitude towards God for every joy that and blessing that you experience in life, and even exactly. the pain, even the pain that we experience in life exactly. is a blessing, is a blessing exactly. in the in the long run. So, no, I don't really, like, I'll give you a perfect example of God's work that's objectively right in my face. So it's like it's undeniable. So it's like as I was being persecuted. And it was very painful, you know, and I know a lot of other people are dealing with a hospital being bombed. So me taking a massive pay cut and uh, being ostracized doesn't seem like a big deal, but it is a fractal. It's like first world problems can actually be worse because you have almost have more meaning sometimes in other conflicts like the Western man being isolated, mocked, you know, living a sedentary lifestyle is like very torturous for a lot of people. But anyway. So I'm thinking I'm effed and the world's crumbling and I have a new wife and a new baby. And I, but I, I, I know what I'm doing is right. And I, I felt like if, you know, if I didn't do that, what kind of a man would I be? Like, you know, you can't even talk about not putting a five-year-old on trans hormones or like, you know, I also got this book deal with Norton Publishings, this massive book deal. They give me 60 grand up front. I'm fighting with Lena Dunham, or I'm saying Lena Dunham is a hard C. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep it clean because she's saying she wished she had an abortion. She's like, I've never had an abortion, but I wish I did. I'm like, you're evil. You know, I'm like going hard at her. My publisher or my, my literary agent slash, no, it was my editor, not the publisher, but he was like, you got to, you can't say stuff like that. I'm like, what kind of a man would I be if I can't make fun of a baby killer? So then, Every other joke now is up for grabs. Like, so do I make fun of what? Just white people with guns? Like what? So I can't do the whole gauntlet. And so they took the money and my fee I paid my agent. So you pay 10% to your agent. So I pay my agent six grand. I get 56 grand. I have to give all 56 back and six grand and I'm hauling brush. And so I'm being hammered, right? But here's the beauty of it. I... I went, I, if I was still on the road, I wouldn't have four kids right now, you know? So I have to stay home and figure stuff out and blah, blah, blah. The whole time I'm having children. So now in 2024, I'm looking at my family, actual wealth, and I'm like, God wasn't hurting me. He was freeing me. You know, it's like, it's like, uh, like everything that was being taken away from me was like cancer. It was like, it was like evil, but I thought it, I was like, uh, and that's the whole thing about idol who sustains you you know it's like does money sustain you because i was getting death threats and all this stuff someone with my um level of influence talking about apac and you know palestine and you know like the, what the jays are doing in it like i was getting legit hammered and there was a time when i was pretty scared and i was like praying about it and I was like, you know, and I'm not a very religious person, but I was like, you know, asking God for help. And it's like, and I had this feeling of like total peace where it's like, and I had this, this 
thought of like, they're God's children. Like it's not, I just have to do as best as I can, you know, and money isn't my sustainer. These, 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 you know, cause the money was being taken away and I was used to making all this money. The money is not the sustainer. My word is like my morality, like what kind of a man am I? The service to my community, it's all right there. And so, and, and it was true. I, so then I start getting people supporting me in my PO box. It's like, there's always a way. There's always a way. That's why I like despair and victim consciousness doesn't actually go anywhere. Like if you're suffering, you know, it, it's telling you something and it's burning off, you know, something that's going to hurt you. Like my mom is the same way. You know, and this is the funny thing about my mom. Like, is she not Muslim, but she's a truther. Here's the a, a thing. She never believed in original sin and she was Catholic her whole life. And I don't either, you know, and she's like, I don't think a baby's born with sin. Like she has a baby and she's like, that's, that's perfect. And that's an Islamic uh, teaching. So I'm like, I've never believed in it. Uh, I don't think some, you know, some guy has to put some water on a baby to make it not perfect. It's like, I think we're born perfect. And then our free will, we can, you know, make bad choices. But so like my mom is totally like that. And so my mom wouldn't wear a mask. So COVID starts, she's a professor of English. And she won't wear, oh no, was it the mask? Oh no, it was me. So I'm making fun of the uh, an event in the 40s, okay? Okay. There's an event and I'm making fun of it. And uh, my mom laughs, that's it. She gets fired. They, they go, oh, you're supporting an event denier. You know, your son- How they you find out about that? It was on camera? Oh, it was on YouTube, on yeah, 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 it was on YouTube. Wow. So, they, wow. That's crazy. Oh, dude, they're nuts. They're so afraid of that. That's their whole liability shield. Without that rollerblading incident, like it's, then they can't be a permanent victim. They're just doing bad things, you know? So they fired your mom. Okay. But this is the beauty. Yeah. Yeah. So it was right before COVID and the college became like a dystopian nightmare. You know, it's like mass and testing. And she got to avoid all of that. And at first she was like totally struggling with it. And then later she was like, wow, I got freed. Like, I don't, you know, I, that would have been hell for me. And you should really read in the Quran. You should read, um, the chapter on Yusuf or Joseph that, you know, is a, like a entire story of Joseph in the Quran, because he has this kind of journey where he goes through all these trials and tribulations. And he goes from a position of being, you know, well off as a son of a prophet like Jacob, but he has these brothers who are jealous of him. And the brothers, it's similar to um, what's related in the Bible. Yeah. And so they they throw him down a well, basically. They're, they have this treachery and he's sold into slavery. He's uh, put into prison. He goes through these tri tribulations that uh, most of us wouldn't be able to handle. Um, but God, it's all God's plan. It's all God's plan for yeah. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like this whole beautiful story. So I would recommend reading that if you want to if you want to start reading the Quran and, and something, just start with that. I think you'll find a lot of value and, and relevance to your personal situation. Yeah. One of my uh, Muslim listeners, shout out to Omar, always tells me to read Yusuf. Uh, I just haven't yet. I might get an audio version or something. I, uh, I yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely look into that, though. I love I love stories like that. I love it because it's so true. It's like same with Job. You know, it's like just hold on. You know, just hold on. Yeah. And, and one aspect of the of the story that's also relevant is that some have claimed that he is living in a kind of gynocentric society, like in Egypt, in the sense that women seem to be dominant. And there are indications of that in the story. And it's a woman who actually, uh, you know, the wife of the Aziz, the, the head of the Egyptian state that puts him in prison, not the Egyptian the head of the state himself. But his wife, because she tried to seduce him and, you know, he said, basically, no, I'm not going to fall for that degeneracy. So she gets really angry and, and ends up imprisoning him, even though, you know, he's completely innocent. So that there's parallels with our current day and age. Oh, yeah. The kind of uh, feminist dominance that we see. But, yeah, that's just. The, the, I mean, the Sphinx is a cat. It was definitely a lady that made that. <laughs> you know, it's a, just some cat ladies like I want it. I want a giant cat. And the cucked guys, that's why it's all about the morality of the men. Because like the cucked guys that are sinning can't stand up to women. I see it all the time. Like they're like when they're up to something, like when guys are up to something, 
They're always like, you're the boss. And women don't want to be the boss. They only act that way if you're like up, if you're like weak and up to something. And so that's why it really is top down. It's like women want to be protected and made a wife and all that. So like they love that. They don't want to be the boss. They're not designed for that. They do that when the man is failing, you know? Uh, it's like when the man's failing, they will, you know, like my wife, my wife, her dad left when she was very young. And so she always wanted to uh, be able to provide for herself. She, she, she gets a master's in engineering. She's very uh, working really hard. But the minute she has a guy that is willing to take control and provide, she's barefoot and pregnant for the next 10 years, you know, because they want that. They feel like feminism is a response to men being indulgent. And, you know, when I did a stand up in the Middle East, like 15 years ago, I made fun of them for banning porn. Like I was, I was like, that's why you guys are so angry, you know? And now I think they're like totally right. And they, you know, that degeneracy, it just, it ruins guys. So the guys are like, kind of quivery, pervy, weak. And then the women become like senator and then they ruin everything. They're like, but but everyone's sad. You know, and that gynocentric tyranny is is more lethal because it's like a soft death. You know, it's like, it, I mean, women are great with little kids, you know, because it's like everyone's equal, protect everything. It's no one's fault. That's great with a three-year-old, but you can't run a nation like that. No. That's another story in the Quran, the story of Solomon, uh, Suleiman. So Solomon also, um, there's a story where there's a queen, the queen of Sheba, and she's a different empire and she's the head of state. And the problem is that they worship idols. They're, you know, so saying with God. So Solomon is trying to bring them to Islam and he uh, basically invites them. Uh, and invites the queen and the queen is just reliant on her advisor she's like what should i do she doesn't really have like the strong leadership quality and then solomon brings her to his palace and it's this you know huge palace and has all these wonders like he's able to like bring her throne and transfer her throne from her own kingdom all the way to his like uh using his power um and she's so impressed that she just submits and, and says yeah i'm, I'm following <laughs> Uh, all so, of you in so, your religion. And I'm telling people that about Islam too. I'm like, they're going to take over and you deserve it. Because if you won't lead, people that will lead will take over. And I'm like, that's a fact. You know, yeah. it's a, it's, a, there's like a void. There's like, if the Western men don't want to take that responsibility, they don't want to have the kids. They don't want to lead the woman. They want to indulge. They want to go to their Britney Spears con or Taylor Swift concerts and get drunk and, it's like, okay, well, there's guys that aren't going to do that, and they're definitely going to win, you know? Because a lot of West, go ahead. It's just people don't want to be mean. It's like these guys don't want to be mean and tell women, like, no. And there's nothing more mean than that. There's nothing more mean than indulging someone's delusions. Like, I have a lot of Jewish listeners because they're like, when you broke the spell of the, you know, the lampshade soap, soap incident, they're like, my life got so much better. I'm like, yeah, living that delirium that steven spielberg movie is so bad for people you know it's like or the permanent victim status where it's like oh you can never make fun of the jays because they're that in no time people will be burning you know and it's like no nah, dude you're you're normal you're like you need this and they give me a lot of loyalty for that because it helps them because like being me like being disagreeable isn't mean like two like two guys Locking antlers and arguing a little bit when they both have honor is very good for society. Yeah. As long as you have honor, as long as you are like, you might be wrong, but you're not lying. That's my motto. Like I can accept that I can be wrong. Like I don't self worship. Like I'm, I was horribly wrong three weeks ago. And I, it was like, I thought this one comedian was conspiring against me. Louis J Gomez shout out. And I was like calling him all these names and like a shill and all this. And then we talked on the phone. And I was totally wrong. And then I made this like real heartfelt video. I was like shouting out Puerto Ricans. It's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of hypocrisy, like don't you find the biggest hypocrite to be Sasha Bar Baron Cohen, like as a comedian? Uh, because he's uh, he built his career on mocking Muslims and parodying Muslims like Ali G. Like all his biggest characters are Muslims. 
uh, parodying how stupid Muslims are, uh, like Borat, how misogynistic they are. But he also has the gall to go and lecture about like, oh, you know, we shouldn't peddle racist stereotypes. We shouldn't, you know, peddle anti-Semitism, et cetera. But your whole career was on the basis of mocking Muslims and making Muslims look like low class idiots, um, you know, wife beaters or whatever. So I, oh, yeah, I don't insane. know if you have thoughts on that. It's absolutely insane. But I feel like they're crea they've created a, their own hell for themselves because we're not gods. So like, if you treat yourself where it's like, yeah, but I did it, you know, it's like, oh, don't make racial stereotypes. It's like, well, you did. It's like, yeah, but it's me though. Like whatever I do is right. Like I'm God, you know, that's how they really, they, they don't say it out loud, but that's really what self-righteousness means where it's like, where it's like, but I did it though. <laughs> you know, And, and that leads to a horrible life. Like I've seen it. It's one reason why I don't, I'm not as mad as I used to be because the vengeance that goes to those people from their acts is like unimaginable. Like I couldn't design a hell for them, you know, cause that's why I won't stop saying the hard end and stuff. And some people don't understand that. They're like, Oh, do you hate black people? I'm like, no, I don't think a word can be evil. Like I don't think this, and that's Islamic too. Like that doesn't have a soul. It's a horn. Like you, that's not, you can't have intention you know, it's one thing if you say, don't say any swear words, no problem. Like I can be non-vulgar, but when someone's like, oh, because of the color of your skin, you can't say this word. I'm like, huh, that's ironic. And another irony about it is people act like all people with dark skin are offended by the N-word, which implies that they think they all are the N-word when it's uh, associated with a behavior. You know, it's well, fast. I think that if something is going to cause people that much pain, then and there's no purpose other than to inflict pain on them, then I wouldn't exactly use the word. That's what we just talked about, though. It's about not being mean, right? But the pain of living like... But not uh, mean for the sake of just being mean. Like being subversive no, just for the sake that. of being subversive. No, right? no, no. no. It's, it's the same as that we just talked about with uh, feminine, femininity. No, that like we violate... Like, women's feelings I think should be respected as long as it's not going to lead to the downfall of society and the downfall of civilization. Uh, but if uh, I have to be mean, if I have to be mean. Censorship laws is the downfall of civilization, my friend. This well, comedian can use the N word right? because he has darker skin. That's, that's as dystopian yeah. as, as, uh, as the queen of Sheba. Oh yeah. No, no, I disagree. There, there is in Islam, there are censorship laws. Like there are blasphemy. Censorship laws, is right? okay but not race-based, that's the whole thing. You can say, okay, don't say this word, this word, this word. You know, um, uh, like I would have no problem performing in Saudi Arabia, none. They'd be like, don't say F word, don't mock the royal family, don't mock Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we're good. And I'd be like, no problem. Don't bring Why? up sex, but no problem. If Why? Someone's Why like, is that no problem, but if they say don't use the N word? <laughs> You'd because because it's uh, objectively okay if you say because of the color of your skin you can't say a word that that guy can say that's race based yeah. uh, censorship laws and that is objectively false that's Talmudic that's nonsense it is but it doesn't have the same meaning like when they use it they're not Nigra Nigra the means black and Portuguese. Yeah, but it's different when someone says it as an insult. When someone uses it as an insult, so especially white trash, white trash. I don't say the W word, the WT word. Oh my God, the WT word. Don't say WT. If it had, if it, if it had that, if there, if there was a word, that's actually a, a slight against white people because why yeah. don't whites consider anything sacred enough that because they'd be insulted behavioral. by it? I'm not white trash, Daniel. Yeah, but that word, like if I say white Some trash, people do you don't act have like the same trash. Kind of, if I smoke meth, kind of. if I smoke meth and stole all the copper pipes out of your uh, house and then married my sister, I'm acting white trash. If a black guy steals a little kid's bike off his uh, porch and throws it in the river, he's acting like a hard end. Don't. Okay. I'm not going to say it, Daniel. It's, it's the word. It's the word that... Because it's an MK Ultra trigger, I know. It's like you want to get into that this conversation. Is, this is like the whole point of like there being hard lines about what is 
uh, taboo. Yeah, what you is, have to be able to be... justify it logically, or else you're you're just a you're Jewy. No, no. If there was if there was a term that whites were insulted by and caused that much pain, analogous to the N word, then I would I would say we should not use that word. We should not. So my say feelings that. determine white trash truth? is not that word. So my feelings determine the truth. No, it's just about having a society of people that will respect each other and as human beings. If someone wanted to ban all N-word, that's a different conversation. But when someone's like, blacks can use it, but not whites. And then you could be like, well, I'm descended from slaves. So what does it mean? Does it mean slave or does it mean a ill-behaved person? Can a white person be an N-word? Oh, oh, how dare you? What if they're half white? What if... If a woman's being R'd by a B, can she say the N-word? What if she's a half B? It, it's nonsense. It's the Talmudic spiral of nonsense feeling based. That's where pathos versus logos. Pathos is pathological. It means emotion-based reasoning. Logos is logic, right? And so if people say, but that word hurts my feelings, I don't, okay, but that's not a, a rule. Does it hurt your feelings because you just stole a little kid's bike? Or maybe it hurts your feelings because you actually think black people are below you. And if you simply don't say a word, you're the good person. Because I see that all the time where these white liberals will be like, if I don't say that word, I'm a good person, even though they are in a system that is designed to keep that to like there is like some of these conspiracy theories are true. I mean, so if someone comes up to you and says, uh, Owen, your wife is b or your wife is this or your mother is this and just right. says something very vulgar or like c word um is it re would you punch that person or would you get angry no i would i would think that that's insulting because they're making a claim about someone i love just uttering a word is not an intention no no but why how do you know his intention maybe he's trying to compliment you by saying that oh your wife is a nasty whatever but you'd well, still get angry. You'd still right. you'd still hate that. You'd still want to silence them. You'd still want to punch them in your in their face. That's a human reaction. Well, Everyone I wouldn't. Has I wouldn't. These lines. Just, I wouldn't punch them in the face because I'm not an N word. <laughs> then that's a problem. Actually, that's a moral slight, or that's a moral deficiency. That didn't that you have. You're not defending. Guy. You're not defending the honor of your mother. You're not defending the honor of your wife. You're just gonna stand there and take it. That's actually taking away from your manhood. The manly thing to do is okay. if someone comes in and insults your wife or your mother, you you teach them a lesson. You teach them some manners. That's 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 chivalrous. That's an honorable reaction, and that's well, a human reaction. Here's the thing, Daniel. I'm an eighth Ashkenazi, so what I do is I slowly start buying their neighborhood, and then I tank the market. That's how I get revenge. I'm just kidding. No, but like just immediately, I I get trolled all the time, like nonstop. I used to be a heckler at a Renaissance festival where people would throw tomatoes at me all day, every day as I insulted them as harshly as I possibly could. So I'm actually like, if we want to talk about the Quran, you're an expert. If we want to talk about insults and human nature, that's me. Okay. So there are people that want you to hit them because they want to turn you into an animal. And if you engage in that, that's not defending your woman. Now, if somebody is posing a threat to anyone you care about, then yeah, physical violence when you, when you need it. But you know, I'm from a, uh, I live in a gun culture. So these things are talked about all the time in my culture uh, about, do you punch someone if you, if you have a gun on you? No, like that's a, no, like you have, if you're holding, if you're, if you're packing a gun and someone calls your mom a C word, you don't get to hit that person because you have a lethal, let's say they hit you back. Okay. Let's say they're, and then you shoot them. Okay, you just murdered someone over uh, a slight insult, you know, and so it, okay, you want to get any still? physical altercation when you when you have a gun in your waistband, you know what I mean? I mean, the underlying point is that like words can cause real harm. Words can cause real harm to people, and therefore it, there should be regulations in the same way that weapons are regulated or. Um, you know, your ability to harm, inflict harm on others is regulated. You're not allowed to strike someone. That's interesting words... you say that, Daniel, because I see you saying Pajit on Twitter mm -hmm. quite a bit. And I think our manure-enjoying friends, that hurts their feelings. 
but that's a that's a religious based thing it's based on their choice and if you choose to follow like some, a disgusting ideology and you choose to mm. follow a disgusting you know practice that's your choice or you you choose to be a moral degenerate those are your choices and of you course i'm going to you and criticize but you no, n-word is just someone's some based on wh who they were following uh, moral degeneracy race. you don't think they make icons out of rappers but so the, i'm not the allowed of the, word, the origin of the word is on the Take basis of skin skin color right it was Take used as black. a degenerate as a uh, denigrating term for people of a specific skin color it had nothing to do with behavior it has to do with so behavior 100 percent that's that's your inter that's not the way that historically that's, that okay, so the word has been I'll, used so all my black friends that think that they're all wrong are you good so remember uh chris rock i love black people but i hate n-word you know what an n-word does they want credit for stuff you supposed to do i pay for my kids you supposed to n-word and then all the black people are like yes yes we have a subgroup of people in our community that act terribly and so they're all wrong like they should all be censored they can't they can't say oh, none that. Of them say, none of them say that. Blacks, others you want to censor black men in America, Daniel? <laughs> Is that what you want to do? You want to you want to take this word away from a black mouth in America? Haven't they had enough, Daniel? They've been through all this persecution. You want to censor their ability to describe someone who stole their TV? So you're telling me 50 Cent is not allowed to say the N-word when someone steals his bike? But what? So then why can't I? Is it because I don't have black skin? So you're the one making the implication logically that people with black skin are the hard end because if we actually look at each other without racial Here. superiority, I don't, by the way, have racial supremacy, but if we I, ask, I know that, but yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Just, then you're you just don't. a subversive person. Like you want I'm to not push subversive, the line. but I'm saying it's you the truth. You want to cross I mean, the red line. <laughs> you no. want to cross the red line. Like it, your they can use the weak. word because it's Your weak opinion. argument doesn't make me subversive. Let me explain why it's a it's not a weak argument. If you have it's the like weakest you, argument if I've your ever son, heard in your life, if, if your son disobeys you and yes. your son like deliberately lies uh, or you know does something destructive, you might spank him or you might like give him a scolding. But let's say that you spank him, for example, just theoretically, you spank him. Does that mean that other people can also spank your kid whenever they want? No. Why not? Isn't that hypocrisy? You can do no. it. Why can't they? You can do it, but why can't they? Because I'm his father. It's not based on the so color what? of my skin. So I, can, on, I, I can have sex on your biology, my, right? It's based I on biology, right? I can have sex with my wife. Why can't other people? Black Just people are Daniel, all biologically Daniel, Daniel, related. Daniel, Black, Black people it. are biologically your related. Your argument is terrible. Well, okay. No, listen. it's not. Okay. I can have sex with my wife. Why can't everyone else? Because of our relationship. Father yeah, exactly. Son. Okay. Black people can use the N-word because of their relationship. Define with their black people. The black race. It's a specific genealogy. It is, a, it is a black? biological thing. So you want censorship laws based on DNA. Is that right, Daniel? Is that in the Quran? Yes. I, it I, is? I, not in the Quran. It's in the Quran. That I'm, that's why I'm glad I didn't. Censorship laws. Having censorship based laws. Based on your DNA? Based on harming people, based on harming people. That, in a, in what a, you're a, saying is not about way. people. No. In an egregious way. No. Yeah. No, no. That's the way that they feel about it. That's the way that they feel about no, it. No, but you're, this that that is that's... the problem I have with religion. Your argument is not what you just stated is in the Quran. You're saying that a someone with dark skin based on their genealogy does not do the same harm as someone with white skin based on their gene with a word without context that's your claim and then you use an example of spanking my kid or having sex with my wife okay those are specific relationships and so if there is a religious law that says your dna determines what words you're allowed to use i would never be a part of that because that's insane well, it's just a matter of not harming people, not it's like not so. you're, you're, like you're, I would be in support of laws that prevent someone coming up harm, to you and, speech. and it's like insulting, when you Jews. insulting your mother, insulting your wife, insulting Daniel, like your family members. These Jews that shouldn't be allowed because it causes harm. Daniel, these Jews had their families die in the Holocaust, and you're gonna mock them? Do you know the harm? Yeah, I wouldn't mock them. I wouldn't mock them. Do you mean I, I see would, you on Twitter, Daniel? You little sneak. I would not. I would not mock. You make fun of people all the time. I see. I see. I see it. 
Pajits. No, no, no. You used to the word Pajit is already considered derogatory. You know that, right? It's not, it's not race based. It's ideology based. We're just calling we're just calling some of these liberal Muslims Pajits. Liberal Muslims. Why? Because they're adopting it's, this kind of Daniel, uh, their submissiveness to Western ideology. Daniel, it hurts their feelings, though. What, what don't you understand? Yeah, it's You're justified. It's justified. It's justified. When my bike is stolen, that's justified, too. <laughs> Do you think it's so? You, <laughs> when someone steals a little kid's bike that they bought with a paper, their paper route money, and my word is not the issue of harm. I still think yeah, about that bike, Daniel. Know. 1991, it was on my birthday. <laughs> Sorry to hear about that. Dude, I saved up for so long for that bike. Yeah. Well, there's there are things that are sacred and there are things you that are black people are causing harm. The irony. I They're think causing people... harm. They're ca causing people harm and, and that kind of emotional pain. I think it does cause pain. What, and it's not really justified. It's not really justified. Yeah. When I see a bike, it causes me pain. I think about it, it hurts me. Should we ban bikes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can call them. You can call them anything that you want. I know it causes me harm. Is, you know, kafir has uh, some connotations with certain people, right? Like filth and, you know. Yeah, that's your own choice. You're choosing to reject um, a religion or not follow a religion. So, again, it goes back to what you choose. Right on. That's the distinction that I'm making. When a black clear. guy chooses yeah. to steal my bike, I don't get to call him a derogatory name. But you're calling him a derogatory name that's based off of a person's skin color alone, not their ideology. But you're putting that in my words. It's not based on their skin color, Daniel. You can act like a hard end no matter what you are. I think you're being a bit of an end right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just change the subject then. <laughs> no, no, but that's a, that's a topic that's near and dear to my heart. And I know uh, I know what I'm talking about with that. I'm not actually like I'm just kind of performatively arguing with you. But I do mean exactly what I'm saying. It's uh, if you make censorship laws based on the color of someone's skin, that's dystopian. And there isn't a religious justification for that. Doing harm is like is like um, I, I understand that. I understand having a civilized society where you don't just have people insulting each other. all, day. And there should be a way to do that. You know, and in Christianity, it's you uh, come to someone privately, then you bring a witness, then you do it in front of people. Like, I love stuff like that. I'm actually trying to work on that because I'm horrible at that. Okay, but saying you're not allowed to say a word because the word inherently causes harm and that's based on your DNA, that's insane. Like, that's... that's no, it's You might as well be Ben Shapiro. No, like all, all we're saying, like do you, you do agree with this principle. There are certain things that are so harmful um, when they're said that we should, we can ban the statement of those things, or we can say that you'll be stigmatized if you say those words. There should be social stigma if you say. I don't mind words. being it's stigmatized. Right I don't mind it. But are there are there words that can be so harmful that? We have to prevent not without it. intention. I understand respect where it's like, oh, yeah, come over to dinner, but don't swear. My family's there. No problem. That's about vulgarity is from the Latin vulgate, which means of the people. It's like crude, the masses. Right. And so to me, it's not about harm. It's about a type of like rough individual that usually works with their hands and they speak in a very blunt and direct way. The higher up you go in the classes of society the more they don't want to hear ugly words. They don't want to hear words with very quick, direct meaning because uh, they're detached from that. They're rich. They're polite. You know, like I, I guarantee Jacob Rothschild doesn't want to hear the N word because it causes harm. He doesn't want to hear, you know, they're, they're above it. And so I can bridge that gap because I understand the intellectual elite. Like my dad was a PhD and I understand that world of just, uh, you know, being a, against vulgarity. But I also understand the world where you have to speak as quickly and directly as possible and you don't care about other people's feelings because your life is hard and rugged. And so if you want to ascend, one thing that is good is to learn how to speak in a way that doesn't offend people. Like my kids, I don't swear around my kids. I call them weak words, not bad words, weak words. That like the N word is a weak word. It's a word of low class, you know, where it's like, it's, 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 it's like, it, it, it 
gives a jolt to it. There's energy in it, but it's not evil in its, se- in its sense. It doesn't have a soul. There's no intention in a word. So um, I'm, I'm with you on that. But the claim that a word can be just bad is, is not valid. You can say a word can represent a social class. A word can scare people. You know, and there there are people that just speak very directly because that's their social economic class. And I, I, I think it's great to not swear. I think it's great to uh, I'm trying to say stuff like it's my understanding that or, um, you know, like no, I, I try not to make as many claims, you know, like uh, uh-huh. because uh, it causes harm. Like what we were just talking about, like if I'm in an argument with someone and I'm like, you're an idiot, like I don't want to do that anymore, like because it's like. You it's haven't just, done that in our conversation, no, but yeah, it's, it's better it's, to be forthright and just say what you think and not I don't actually think you're like, an idiot, oh, my perspective, when my I say perspective that, or my understanding, like that couching things in that relativistic language actually is, annoys me. Oh, I boy. Just say so, what you say, what you mean, you know, be forthright. You're not okay, going to Daniel. Me. So what if I, I can't possibly know? Like right now, I suspect that you're an idiot. I'm just kidding. I, I don't think you're an idiot at all, but. Let's say I'm like getting a feeling like you're a moron, but I don't know. A moron is actually a very specific word. It's someone with an IQ of 60 to 75. It was during a very bad part of American eugenics. And the Irish were also targeted, not just the blacks, okay, where they would castrate people based on their IQ. And it was moron, idiot, and imbecile. Those are the three categories. Idio, uh, which is Latin. That was zero to 25. You're like basically brain dead. So the irony about political correct speech speech and like not doing harm is now people don't want to hear the word retarded, even though that was the PC term. Retardant means underdeveloped, like to retard something. Moron is a, desi- a po- <laughs> is a scientific designation that led to castration. But yet people are like, you're a moron. They don't say M word. Well, my great grandfather happened to be a moron and they took his testicles. You caused harm. <laughs> right? It's nonsense. So causing harm, like I like Sharia punishments where it's like, you know, you got to get whipped. Like sometimes you got to get whipped and that's harm, but I think it's good for people. You know, like if you, if you steal, you get whipped. Yeah. But but part of that is like, if you blaspheme, like if you blaspheme, there are strict punishments, but there are words, there are words, even if, even if someone doesn't mean it, even if like their intention is benign, but they're still uttering like, blasphemies. Give me an example. Well, I'm not gonna blaspheme no, no, myself. No, no, if no. Someone insults insults God and says, "I wouldn't you know, do that though," or insults the Prophet Muhammad, or insults his family. Um, that's something that. Well, actually, his family, I'm not sure, but insulting him himself, that's a blasphemy that would come with severe punishment, up to capital punishment. So the society, because there are things that are sacred within every community, within every society. And if you don't protect what is sacred, then everything becomes non-sacred or people just start worshiping themselves and things devolve into Satanism. Do you think Um, blacks are sacred? No, but I didn't. You can have levels, right? You can have like, okay, there's blasphemy. This is the worst. Below that is just insulting people on the basis of their race. And in Islam, we call that jahiliya. Jahiliya, which means like you're ignorant, like you're you're dumb because you are insulting someone on the basis of who he was born to. He has no control over that. He has no control that he's born black or Indian or you're, white. You're, that's a so, you're in, so you're that's ignorant. And it's something that is something that, is destructive to society or this causes is problems. Like religion, so maybe it's not it's not going to be like a blasphemy punishment but this is something that should be sanctioned this is something and this that is should why be i don't like religion because you have such you you have this such a you you feel like you have such a moral authority but what you're saying is actually racist why? okay like you're saying that some races can do stuff that others can't based on what words are allowed to you this is again if you just want to understand me okay the reason I'm not into religion is because I look at what you just said, where you say, okay, you get punished when you mock uh, races based on their birth and they can't help themselves. I didn't say you get punished. I said that this is something that is considered jahiliya. It's something that's considered ignorant, uh, low okay. class and stupid. And you, there's no punishment. Like you're not going to get whipped 
uh, necessarily because it's not about the whipping, N-word. Daniel. It's not about the whipping. It's about the but, principle. But it is something that is it's something immoral. Like this is something that's okay. Okay. Sanctioned. I agree with you if it's somebody that actually is demeaning the humanity of someone based on race. Like I was appalled at Benjamin Netanyahu calling Arabs rats. Like that to me is dehumanizing and saying, right? What I do is not uh, dehumanizing someone based on their race. It's not, it's not that. And so people perceive it that way because they haven't actually thought about it. And so many people are so convinced they're already right. In Christianity, it's like they've been born again. They're already saved. So everything they say is right. It's not right. And to make... And Dave Chappelle totally agrees with me on it. He has a whole bit about going to HR and Comedy Central. And he's like, not allowed to say the F word around about sodomites, right? And he's like, okay, why is that? And they go, because Dave, you're not gay. He's like, well, am I allowed to say the N word? He's like, oh yeah, of course. And he goes, well, I'm not a, I can't even do the joke because the, the censorship is nonsense. He's like, I'm also not a blah, 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 implying that this white, B word or C word, whatever word you want to use, B word, C word, the F word. He wanted to use the F word. And she said he could use the N word because the F word, you have to actually do sodomy. And then my question is how many times, how many times do you have to be gay to be able to use the word? Is it one experience at Ibiza? Do you have to be married to a guy? It's, it's insane. Now to say, don't blaspheme our prophet or God is completely reasonable to say, your social class, like your social identity determines what words you're allowed to say. If you keep talking about liberalism. That's the definition of Marxism. That's the oppressor and the victim class. That's how you take over a society. It's, and it's the most Jewish thing in the world. So congratulations, you're Ben Shapiro. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, your family, your uh, parents were professors of English and rhetoric. You said there's another professor of rhetoric or English rather, uh, Stanley Fish. I don't know if you've heard of him, but he used to write op-eds for the New York Times. He has a book called There's No Such There's No Such Thing as Free Speech. And it's a good thing, too. And his whole argument is that, you know, even in this liberal West where we claim to have free speech and everything is allowed, you can insult whoever. Um, actually, no, you know, there are things that are red lines you can't cross you'll be punished for and this is something inherent this is this is inherent to every community like every community has these red lines because the whole nature of a community is that you have some shared beliefs that hold the community together and if those beliefs are questioned or denigrated then that actually will destroy the community itself so it's a it's a sophisticated argument and uh he makes i don't think he's jewish um, I think no, no, I, I understand. Like, I don't agree with uh, with free. Like, uh, I I agree with you. Like, we're we actually my social media. You can't even say like, damn. Like, I'm all about creating a community where you you have like you you lower that aggra- you lower that damage, you lower that hostility. But I need to know the rules and why the N word and the H word. You know, when it, like so algorithms pick up. Holocaust, Hitler, the hard end, right? Because those are the collective religion of the West. You have this ridiculous slavery narrative, the rollerblading incident in Germany, and that's what they consider sacred. Because you can't say the N-word because that, uh, you know, Kutna Kinte weeps and it reminds them that they're still suffering. It's not, dude, the Jays did that narrative. You know, Roots and the how the H got the situation in Germany. Those miniseries came out at the same time, right after like, I think one of these Mossad guys bought like a, like a giant textbook company. It was, it's all like a spell. So the original American thing was we all come here as like various groups and we have different levels of persecution and whatnot, but we're out now and everything's great. So let's, uh, let's uh, you know, have a great life. And America uh, makes fun of races and differences because that's how we get along. You, you do the Irish jokes and the Italian jokes and the black jokes. and the, Because you can't have a country like ours with so many demographics unless you have comedy. That comedy is not hate. It's actually the only way you can get along, in my opinion. You know, if you look at Jordan or Qatar, they don't have to deal with that. Like they have... The, the, like. The Middle East will look at tribalism in a much different way than America does, because in the Middle East, it's a lot more like homogenous groups. And they can in the past, 
uh, got real bloodthirsty against each other with like moral claims of bloodlines and stuff. America is like so many groups of people that if you can't make fun of each other and see what's sacred and figure it out, you're, it's it's chaos. And I think that's one reason why we're having so much tension in America is because of the don't do any harm, don't damage word nonsense. But be, but I am with you on that. I am with you on uh, the sacred and the profane, where it's like it's good for a community to have what's sacred. So, but you have to explain to me why. So I totally understand blasphemy, totally. You know, like that. I, if I, you know, that makes sense to me. I don't even have the instinct to do that. But it's like, is a black guy God? Like, how is that blasphemy? You know, or if you make a claim, you insult someone's mother. Well, she's a prostitute. Okay, that's harm. That's like, does damage to a reputation. You can't prove it. You're like, I get why that's punished, but just a word about a black guy who stole a bike, like, is that a religion now? It's like the moon landing. It, it's not. It's not a religion. A lot of black dudes came here after. So no one even knows what's. I have a theory that there was a lot of black people here and they, they drummed up, they exaggerated the slavery narrative so that they didn't feel like they had any like home. You know, it's a very uh, MK ultra destructive thing to do to a guy it, to, to you, say you, like, you, what's you that? You agree that they've suffered. You, you do agree that the African Americans are the most, um, you know, marginalized group in terms of how they have suffered in their history in America specifically. You think it was unfair how they suffered? Yeah. I think that they were exploited. So you don't think God was in control. You think like it wasn't fair. I think that they were there was injustice committed against them. They were persecuted. They were enslaved. They were, um, uh, and they continue to be today. I think the number like the number one group in America that is exploited are blacks. I think that's why we see the problems that we do um, with with uh, a lot of these cities. Um, in America, it's because of that community being exploited. And now like other group, other races are following down the same path. Why? Be it's just like one generation removed. So in one generation, this, the kind of problems with drug use, crime, violent crime that we see in, in with the black American community, the whites are following in suit, you know, Middle Easterners, second generation Middle Easterners are going to have the same exact problems. It's just that this liberal hegemony, this this system has exploited them for longer than it has, you know, other groups. But everyone is following this down the same path. It's a it's a path of destroying the, the family, destroying uh, fatherhood, destroying uh, parent child relationship, destroying any kind of social structure. That's uh, they're the biggest victims of that in America. And I think that that's sad. It's it's very it's like a tragedy. Do you don't think that they've suffered? I mean, what, what, what that implies, I think, is so dark that I don't agree with any of that. It, like, are they it's dark? dark that like, they, like, so they couldn't. So they there's nothing they can do about it. They're just the white man just just really took their dads. And is that what you're like implying? That. No, I think that they have been uh, targeted uh, for by the liberal system. Um, all these ideas of women's freedom and abortion and uh, even uh, LGBT, all of these things were so they're pushed victims. onto them first. Yes, so they're, they're victims. victims. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's they're called victims. victim consciousness. Yeah. You, There's no way out. Deny that there, are there are no victims in the world. There's no More way out of victim thing. consciousness. There's no way out. Vic victimhood is a choice. And yeah, I know a lot of black comics, Daniel, and uh, none of them have been had their wife kicked off Airbnb for a joke. None of them have been kicked off PayPal. None of them has been banned from all theaters and clubs. None of them had the global media call them a cult leader and a hate monger. I've been way, way more targeted than the average black comedian. And I'm not a victim. I see it as a blessing. And so if you want to just say, you compare oh, yourself to like the entire black race in America. <laughs> no, you, you want to enslave them mentally, Daniel. I just don't know if you're aware of it. No, That's what I want most... to, I acknowledge well, they're victims, suffering. Daniel, because of their skin. Like they're victims. Like 
They're victims. No, Muslims are victims too. Muslims are also a victim of a white colonial project, a liberal project. So Muslim uh, is a racial thing, huh, Daniel? No, it's, white it's colonialism. Uh, it overlaps. There can be overlap. There can so be So white. Oh, you want to talk about racism, right? But you say white colonialism. So because of the color of my skin, I was part of colonialism and the oppression no. of Muslims, Daniel? No. You just no. said that. Is it, Do you want to clarify? Sure, I'll be happy to clarify. So uh, Muslims the, are the victims colonial. because of white. You said white. You said white. They and were white. Yeah, they were historically white. Yes. What about all the blacks that that shoot and rape and do all kinds of stuff? Uh, are, do they have victims? Like when a black man rapes a white girl, is she a victim or is colonial? No, no, see, a victim? no, no see, you're getting very sensitive when I mention white crimes. I'm not getting sensitive. Crimes. I'm just breaking you down. No, no, I'm, you're not breaking anything down. You, you're okay. very. Are you sensitive about the fact that? The main colonizers of the last two hundred like years talk, have been like have been white quieter? people. I can talk quieter if you think that like no, no, you're just don't talk over me. Just let me finish a sentence. So the is this, as a historical fact, the colonial project began in Europe. It was on the basis of I'm talking about European colonialism after the Enlightenment. So they had this idea that <laughs> um, we have to get rid of religion. We have to create this utopia through utilitarianism and science. And the white man, because of his high IQ, he was able to discover the value of utilitarianism and science. You know, these brown savages they and, and blacks, they can't really develop science. So we're going to give them the gift of civilization. And we do this through colonialism. It was a white ideology and a white philosophy. And it's... Um, right, so you know, it's, a racial, it's a racial philosophy. Yeah, yes, it's it's a racial philosophy, yes. All right. Well, does that mean that I think every white person Daniel? <laughs> that doesn't that doesn't mean I think every white person is responsible for colonialism or has to apologize for it, but you still have to recognize You're implying it though. Are. You're implying no, that a, a I'm white, white too. Race. I'm white too. So what how does that even I don't make consider sense? you white. Why not? Because you're you look kind of brown. <laughs> no, I'm I'm white. I'm uh, you got a little Aryan. Uh, you got brown eyes. Someone hopped the fence. Yeah, okay. Well, if you have brown eyes, you can't be white. That's an interesting standard. You don't but even know what white is. means. I mean, you're using terms that Muslims have been victimized by white colonialism is a nonsense thing. And we don't have to argue about it. It's fine. I'm not sensitive about Why? it. I just think it's funny. Why? How many Muslims died because of the uh, famine caused by the British colonial empire? Winston Churchill was Winston Churchill white. I don't know if he had brown was it, eyes. Or was not. it Winston Churchill's fault? So God wasn't in control. God was actually Winston Churchill. Oh, God is control, but He gives us agency to do in the world what we will. Right. And so why we'll, you we'll face the consequences of that? Now. Why you guys keep being victimized? If uh, no, no, God is not, control, there's a difference between being a victim and having a victim complex. I agree, it's bad to have a victim complex. You have to rise above that. But we're just acknowledging injustice right and wrong it's a very simple distinction to make injustice was committed against uh you in your life injustice was committed against muslims through the colonial project but they're victims was committed though. against blacks are you a victim are you a victim oh no, no i'm not oh sorry i didn't mean to swear i'm no victim blacks got a free so ride no injustice, in no injustice was committed against you I'm not a victim. That, in, no I'm, injustice was committed against you. That's what victim means. Victim means, was there an injustice committed against you? Were you persecuted? That's not what victim means. Vic yes, are you a victim versus has an injustice been done to you are very different statements. Okay, then I'll, instead of using the word so victim, the girl's raped, I'll say, has, an, has an injustice been committed against you? Yes or no? You, you hurt my feelings with the white colonialism, so I should whip you in the public square. <laughs> It may it caused damage. It made me because I'm from I'm actually from an Irish background, and because I have white skin, you know, like we also were colonialized by Winston Churchill. So like, you're not respecting that Irish people are white, and they have a horrible. Everybody has a horrible history and a great history. It's all good. Blacks got a free ride to America. They're now the eighth richest group in the world. Okay, their biggest downfall is crunking and butt shaking all right they're fine telling them that they're victims will not help them at all like they you don't if you go yeah yeah you're a victim 400 years of slavery that's why kanye west got into so much trouble he said slavery is a choice 
You're enslaved by your sin. You're enslaved by your mentality. That's what it is. You can be enslaved by God or enslaved by man. That's your choice. If you want to say that the white man has enslaved the Muslims, you just made the 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 white man your God. You know, and he, you might not see that. that but... Historically, that did happen. Historically, injustices okay. were committed. Okay. I mean, that doesn't mean there's collective guilt or collective respon uh, responsibility. I'm not saying that you owe me anything. Um, or you owe Muslims anything just by virtue of you, your skin color. I re I reject that ideology. You think Muslim, but if, Muslim but if, like if you want to, if you so Muslims want to never at, had slaves or did empires or anything, never. If if you want to look at the world through a racial <laughs> lens, then you have to be, you know, you have to take your own medicine. Basically, you want to criticize blacks for these kinds of for stealing your bike, but no, as soon as I no, mentioned no, colonialism and the genocide of millions, the genocide of millions, suddenly you're very- Andy, you're not getting it. That, I'm that not, kind of I'm not doing a collective right. racial blame. You are, that's why the word, the N word exists. Cause the N word is attached to behavior, not a race, right? It's very easy oh, for man. whites currently to say Crazy. that the blacks are why America is going downhill. The average black costs a taxpayer $800,000 from birth till death and they contribute very little. If you look at crime stats, it's absolutely insane. I actually give the argument that they are being groomed in a lot of ways in this world, that the same people who own private prisons can own rap labels. Yes, but saying that doesn't help anyone because it's still their choice. They're not victims. If they have a victim mentality and they're like, yo man, you know, 400 years and then they took the dad out of the, no, they didn't physically take your dad. They made offers. That's how the devil works. The devil makes offers. The devil can't make you do anything. Shaitan is not above God, right? What is what is the devil offering the Palestinians? What is the devil offering, you know, these starving children? Something. Mm -hmm. So it's their own fault. Everything is God's will, right? So, yes. okay. So don't you think it's a little blasphemous to say man is like in charge, right? Like the, the story of Yosef that you, you just told me about. Don't you think a blessing will come from the Palestinians if this happens? Like people don't have a right to life. People die. What about all the Irish? You don't care about all the English that have died so many times from famines and wars and all that. You don't care because they have white skin, right? I'm so actually not white supremacist that right when uh, Gaza kicked off, I'm like, you know, you're, you're doing something wrong when someone like me is rooting for the brown guys. OK, because that is insane. Like you have these people and they're being bombed from above with a militaristically superior force and there's nowhere they can go. OK, like that's insane. That's obviously evil. Obviously. Now, what I know about life is that when, like evil doesn't work like the way evil people think unless there is some element of consent. Like if if evil people try and hurt you. You will get something from it if you hold the line morally. But if you don't, you suffer until you do. That's what I, that's my belief. And if that's not Islam, that's why I don't like organized religion. Because if you say, no, white colonials have hurt Muslims, I'm like, that to me is nonsense talk because that's how spellcraft works. You get egregores, you get the whites, the blacks, the Muslims, and, and not the principle of it. Like setting yourself on fire is a demonic act. Like, those are the principles of it. And so a lot of people have no problem demonizing whites. Oh, you had to tame the savage and bring science. And uh, I, dude, you don't think I've heard that? I was from a liberal background. Most of it's total nonsense. I'm actually tight with a lot of American Indian tribes because I played college lacrosse. I played lacrosse my whole life with Indians. They fought all the time with each other, all the time. They don't have lands. They didn't even believe in private property. They migrated wherever the animals went and they constantly went to war with each other and they literally would eat the heart of the other leader, okay? So they weren't playing kumbaya when us whites came and showed them the wheel and said, you're like an animal to us. That's, that, that's, that's liberal nonsense. And it's funny that you like to mock liberalism, but your talking points are very, very liberal, okay? It's yeah, a liberal system. Like the, the hypocrisy of the liberal system is that they'll cry about Native Americans and they'll cry about, um, you know, the colonization of the natives in Canada or wherever, but then they'll have no problem with 
uh, neo-imperialism and importing or exporting LGBT to the Muslim world and saying, oh, you have to accept these feminist principles. Otherwise, we're going to bomb you or we're going to sanction you or we're going to invade your country like they did in Afghanistan, like they did in Iraq. Um, sanctions that they're putting on many countries to this day on the basis of these liberal values. So that's that's the hypocrisy. It's all one tradition. It's, it's actually all one not liberal hypocrisy. Tradition. It's, it's, a, it's, how to, it's how to own people. So if you want to break someone and own them psychologically, you convince them they're a victim. That's what I know that a lot of people don't know. And people can listen or not. I'm not mad. I'm trying to do Ramadan. I'm a little bitchy right now. I get it. I haven't do so You're I'm actually not, fasting. You're actually fasting. Yeah. I haven't eaten anything. Uh, you know, I, uh, it, it's sundown. I'll have a big feast, but I've went the last three days with no food during the day. So like if I'm wow. a little sensitive, it's cause I'm actually trying to not eat food and I'm like a six foot eight, giant maniac. So it's like, I'm doing the best I can, but I don't know how I know this. Maybe it's my white colonial background, but if you want to enslave someone, you convince them they're a victim and then you own them for life because then they're dependent on you. It's like, oh, the, the poor black man, the poor. Meanwhile, the very systems that they've set up ensures their enslavement, their dependency, right? That's the whole thing. If you say you're not a victim, go to work. You're not, you, you shot a guy, Tyrone, you, it's your fault, right? That's how you make a black man strong. And they don't want that. They want people weak. They want people to think like the white man has kept them enslaved. No, 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 no. No one's enslaving anybody. And so if you treat them like actual human beings and say, it's, it's like how I treat Jews, you know, it's like, yeah, there's a, a roller coaster in Auschwitz and now no one can make fun of your nose. It's like, no, no. Like you're not a victim, Ira, you know? And so victim mentality is very, um, it's very feminine. And so I have all, I've started liking Islam because it doesn't appear like victim consciousness. It's like, if you, if you, if you act like victims and say you've been oppressed, you're just like Jews. It's like sand Jews, you know? Yeah, you're, you're conflating. Like we're talking past each other because we're using two different ideas of what a victim is like i just mean recognizing injustice and I, it seems like you agree with me you're able to call certain things evil certain actions evil um i think you do think that you know uh, six million or three million algerians being genocided by france like you'd consider that to be evil starving them how, yeah, but how did it happen i used to go down that road a lot with ukraine i used to go why is everyone talking about the Holocaust? We're not the Holodomor. So I actually researched this stuff. I used to live in the Czech Republic too, because I really wanted to know how do you kill millions of people? Killing two guys is hard. How do you how do you convince? It's like herding cats. Like I have goats and cows and all this stuff. I'm real big into animal psychology. So I know how to herd goats. I know how to get people. I know how to use Judas goats and do all that stuff. How do you kill? How does a small group of whites kill millions of people? And I'll tell you how like you you can kill cats. a million people today. You can kill a million people very easily um, in America. All you have to do is you have all these people, millions of people in Houston or L.A. They're dependent on water, electricity, all of these exactly. utilities. Exactly. You they're dependent on food production, like these exactly. supply lines. You cut those off. There you go. You've killed millions of people because they're going to starve to death within a week. That's exactly so how, right. how is that hard to understand? That's exactly what they did in Algeria. Yeah, that's what, what they did. in. that's what they do in death camps. Like they, they cut off your food and water. Exactly. Uh, that's what they were doing in Gaza. They're cutting off. We don't disagree, bro. Food. We don't disagree. Yeah, but, so then it, it's easy, easy to see how you can kill a million people. It's not actually that difficult. Yeah, but it's you got to get them dependent on you for their food and water. That's not easy. So Ukraine, the way they did it is they used this Marxist uh, shit stuff that you're talking about with like, oh, you've been oppressed, all this. So they whispered that all, they whispered into the peasants' ears, these landlord owners are colonial, all the nonsense, right? And so they got the peasants to kill their own landowners. Then a very small group of grabbers came in, and it was easy pickings at that point because they destabilized, they got them in debt, and they got them to subvert their own system, and they did it through the idea of victim consciousness, race-based victim consciousness. It's it's classic. And so if you're going to kill uh, tons of Algerians, the way you do it is you get them. Uh, it's a it's a mousetrap. You need free cheese. I kill mice all the time. Like I'm in the natural world, bro. I know 
I know how to kill stuff. You got to give them something for free, right? The, the mouse that doesn't want free cheese doesn't get trapped. And I, I, people call me paranoid. I have a well. I have like, I grow my own food and people literally think I went insane. They're like, you're, you're schizophrenic. You're psychopathic. I'm like, you don't see how people get killed. People get killed when you look at a grocery store and you think that's where food comes from. And then, and then you, you go like this with your water. That's where water comes from. Now you are in complete submission to a group of people. And if those people hate you, that's a horrible idea. Like, let's say you realize that there's a group of people that literally hate you. And you're like, okay, they're going to supply all my food and water. All right. You don't think that that might be a bad call. And maybe people should stop saying uh, that everyone's a victim and be like, okay, so moving forward, how do we not do that again? You know, I mean, and I got to go here. Soon, right? sure, What's sure. that? Yeah, but they take it over. It's not like they're. Choice. How do they take it over? How does a small group of people take over millions and millions of like? Are they stronger people? Or are they? Sm- yeah, you have you have we- stronger weapons. Yeah, yeah, you have weapons that you use to go and take over their infrastructure, and then you starve them to death. That's no fault of the people themselves. That's no fault of the Algerians. That's no fault of the Bengalis or the subcon people in the subcontinent that were starved to death by colonial powers. Like these are real. Um, so genocides that have happened get, historically and continue to happen food? to this day. Bro, I'm my family history had the Irish potato genocide. You're not unique with the brown people, bro. This is human I'm, claim, I'm not saying that it's unique. Genocides <laughs> so have no happened victim consciousness. in Russia and Ireland. Yeah, these right. are but the no victim one's... consciousness is we need the English to get potatoes. And people think I'm crazy, but I grow my own potatoes because I'm not going to be under the thumb of people who hate me. So then how did all these Irish die? Or starve to death if they can because grow their own they potatoes. were dependent, they got dependent. They're growing their own potatoes. A lot of them were not growing their own potatoes. A lot of it was urban populations that were wiped out. Well, if you have that kind of uh economic condition and then you have weather conditions, like some years you don't have a harvest, some years there's just no harvest because of wi- a bad winter or whatever, yeah, or an early winter, and then you don't have a har- harvest, then you starve to death. But the people who are implementing that kind of condition where you're cut off from the resources that could easily save your life or feed millions of people, so what's the they, are, they are they are causing a persecution, an injustice, a genocide. We hold them accountable. We say that this is this is wrong. That this is not a racial indictment of you or any white person. So why say white then? You know, Zionism that's what historically it was historically. That's what it was. If it was so, Arabs doing it, if it was right. Arabs doing it, we call it Arab colonialism. So Arabs never did it. Not in that way. No, really. No. Hmm. Wherever, wherever Arabs, the Assyrian wherever Muslims, empire where, never where, subjugated where, people, Daniel, wherever the Assyrian, the Nineveh. I don't know about the Assyrian. I'm talking about Islamic empires, Islamic empires. Wherever they uh, colonized, you you can say colonized, those areas prospered, right? So uh, the Arabs moved from, or the Muslims moved from the Arabian Peninsula to uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem became a thriving center uh, of life and civilization. They went and took over the Persian Empire. They they conquered the Persian Empire. Persia becomes Persians. Persia the becomes the Jeets have a totally different story. So that's why I like to hear all the different sides. Even yeah, even the South Asia, okay, all, the Pajit side of the story is just nonsense. When you look at the history of the subcontinent, when Muslims came in, they brought this thriving civilization. Whereas with Western colonialism, everywhere that the West colonized became a, a basically a S hole, you know, a S hole country. Yeah, like why? America, Australia, just total garbage, right? Not America was colonized by who? Whites. Yeah. Yeah. By exterminating the population. Oh, God. It's so gross. <laughs> by exter- How did we do that? Was it blankets? Was it, was it blankets and smallpox? Yeah. Do you know how? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was blankets, smallpox, and just genocide, mass genocide. You guys aren't into the... Are historical guys- doc- it's all historically documented. It's the whites? Yes. Europeans. No, no, no. The white white man is just the most innocent. Race. I get it. I get it. We're they only bring science and civilization. White people only bring the beautiful light of civilization to the world. We have you different know, science, paradigms. technology, medicine. You we know, have different paradigms. 
and that's okay. We have different paradigms. Like, yeah, honestly, like groups. I'm not yeah, mad at you. I just didn't groups. see the world differently. You know, like the whites, <laughs> but I can't say the end. White, Euro white Europeans. Yeah. It's totally. a historical term. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so there's no whites in America. It's yeah. It's, all right. Anyway, well, this has been awesome. I got to go. Uh, I got to hit my P.O. box because I'm not allowed on YouTube like you. Um, well, we'll see how long that lasts. No, you, you'll be. They'll let you. Um, I got to go to my P.O. box because if anybody wants to contact me, they can write me a letter. Because the one thing that held strong is the United States government. Uh, P.O. box 490 Sandpoint, Idaho 83864 if anybody wants to correspond. Because um, I am just a poor brown man who's being persecuted on the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> no no you're not a victim don't I'm think not, of yourself as a victim don't think of yourself as a victim oh, oh i don't at all well no that's the irony is i think my they mentality, kicked you off of everything and they blocked you from everything that that's not i'm doing better now that's not persecution that's not injustice it it is persecution but i'm not a victim that's an identity no no if you say it's a persecution that's that's a victim mindset that you have don't look yeah, at it as persecution it's look it's as an opportunity i do so you're telling me right now I will say this, my method with, with like treating the blacks is way more, uh, power building it then, then to say, oh, you're being oppressed all the time. Nothing's your fault. People with white skin are oppressing you. There's nothing you can do Tyrone. Right. If you say, if you say we've all you're had putting words in my mouth, you're putting words in my mouth. Isn't it Islamic? Didn't your prophet say that people that believe they have a racial injustice in their past are worse than dung beetles? No, I don't know what that's no, referring no. to. Well, apparently there's something like that in the Quran because I remember really thinking about that, that people that act like their race is like uniquely persecuted, I believe they were compared to uh, dung beetles by your prophet. So it's just something to think about. And that's one reason why uh, I can have issues in religion because I'm like, so what are the rules? Do we just make up rules, Right. No, it's pretty simple, very coherent and uh, and consistent. Yeah, white colonial, yeah. white. Got it. Yeah, white. I say white colonial because it, that historically it was white colonialism. So, that doesn't mean that whites are collectively guilty for that, or that I put any blame on white people. You, the, the, by the same the token, I can recognize. By the, same, by, the same, by the same. By the same token, I can recognize that blacks and other races, including whites, have faced many injustices throughout history. And we can point them out. We can look at how many Christians, white Christians were genocided in Russia in the 20th century, and we'll see millions who were genocided. That's an injustice. We can point that out. Well. <laughs> They're too lazy <laughs> to dig a well, so a we'll grab That's your solution. Food. That's your solution to everything. Like, just it build literally a well. Is. Build a well. There, if people just knew how to build wells, there would be no genocide. There would be no crime. I mean, no, there'd be crime. There'd be no. like you, I mean, obviously, that's uh, obviously what I'm saying is accurate. So it's like, okay, do we just so if you get dependent on a water supply from a, a people that hate you and you starve, like you hold no responsibility, like you can just dig a well, like right, like how hard is that? You just dig a well, you just dig it. You can have you can be a homesteader and still get you know ruby ridged. So what, like. Yeah, and when we they weren't got, dependent on it, is that they they suffered a great injustice by the federal government, right? They were they homesteading. Publicly, they were not dependent on anything. They publicly said the government had no authority over them. Isn't that against the law in in, in the Quran? In the U.S. Right? <laughs> no, in the Quran, your own religion, Daniel. Your own religion says and don't. Your own subvert. religion says like don't subvert the U.S. government. You're not supposed to in, in Islam unless it stops you from being Muslim. That's the that's the ruling, right? I mean, but what do I know though? I mean, we got these white colonialists. <laughs> I mean, isn't that what it is? Isn't that in the Quran? Like you're not supposed to challenge the government unless they not allow you to be Muslim. Isn't that a rule, right? Oh yeah, if, if you're Muslim, you should obey the law of the land by virtue of being in the country like you've agreed right. to be in this country. You agree to follow the law of the land. Exactly. And except the authority of the government. Yeah, sure. Right. So if you publicly challenge that, could there possibly be a repercussion? So, okay, you're saying... No, it's Ruby horrible. Ridge is not the best example. I didn't realize... No, that you people were, in the media... On the, on the government side... Dude, you're Ruby talking Ridge. to a guy who lives in North Idaho. Like, I have 
people in the media have compared me to Ruby Ridge and the woman and their kid got murdered by federal agents. Okay. Yeah, so I know terrible. all about Ruby Ridge, but do you read about how they got there? Because if not, you just become a doomer truther and it's pointless. I've went down those roads where you're like, Oh, they can just kill us anytime. Why garden? It's like, no, what did they do to provoke the government? Was the government wrong? Obviously, they murdered a woman and a child. But were they were they provoking, provoking, provoking? Is there scripture that tells you don't provoke a government unless they make it illegal to practice your religion? Yes. Is there a reason? Yes. Because they are crazy. Like governments are crazy, but they're always going to be there and just learn how to live within it and don't challenge their authority because they will shoot you. Like I told people the same thing on January 6th. All us white colonialist kefers, when they were all going there, I'm like, don't do that. Like, don't try and overthrow your government. It's like not going to work. You have to have people that want to slowly change. Didn't Doesn't the Quran say that? You have to change yourself before Allah uh, gives you something. So it's about the internal struggle, not the external. So that, you know, I, I see a lot of truth in that. And so that's why I've said nice things about Islam. But like that whole race victim, I mean, that's for the birds. But I I do uh, appreciate you. And, uh, you know, but Pajit does hurt a lot of people's feelings. And I just want you to think about that. You know, damage is damage, Daniel. It's, it's their N word. So, uh, yeah, I will do this again. Yeah, I think it was a very genuine conversation and I really enjoyed it and Me too. had a lot of fun. Um, I think it's much better, like it gets more raw and real when we have disagreements as opposed to just agreeing on everything. And yeah, and it's funny. <laughs> like I'm still a comedian. It's like this, like me going, Daniel, like that's funny. Like I'm, I, I know what I'm doing. I'm not just like sometimes people are like, why are you yelling? Are you unhinged? I'm like, because it's entertaining and funny. Like you use your your voice like a instrument, you know. It's like, and uh, I mean, we have like big disagreements, like really deep disagreements, but we still can have a conversation and smile and of learn course. from each other. So it's no problem. Yeah, I can always be friends with people as long as I think they believe it and they're saying what they believe to be true. Because no one's ever going to agree on on stuff. Totally, you know. Like imagine. Like, and so the only question is, are you covering the seed with, you know, that's the only real question. Like, are you actively hiding truth for a personal reason? And that's the only reason I got offended by being called a kafir. It's funny because the people who like bring out that whole explanation, the etymology of the word kafir about seed, it's usually people who are trying to take the edge off the word kafir. <laughs> And it's like people are trying to even sugarcoat the concept of kafir, which is uh, ironic. It's that's ironic it, because it, yeah. that's what actually teed you off. <laughs> so, I love it. I love it, man. Well, much love, and I'm glad we're buddies. Okay, thanks, Owen. Um, no, he jumped off. Okay, so that was a very interesting conversation. Uh, he just jumped off, but um, I think he is sincerely trying to figure out certain things. But we have to continue to talk to people and discuss with them these issues um, about what is sacred. Like he's coming from this liberal background, this liberal mindset. And that affects your psychology. It's, he has trouble with accepting an organized religion, as he said. He has trouble with abiding by certain red lines. So that's what this conversation was really about, like objective truth. What are real red lines? Is there anything sacred? What does he consider sacred? Um, so that's why we spent a lot of time on these kinds of topics, going from race to history to colonialism, whatever. But anyway, uh, so I hope you all enjoyed that. And maybe there will be future conversations as well. Um. Maybe we can just look at this chat for a second before I drop off to <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I hope Owen takes some time to look into history and other things he tries to use as argument for how he feels. 
Yeah, we all need to look at history. May Allah reward you. Jazakallah khair. When is your next genius of Islam? Um, we're about to finish, you know, a major step in the recording for genius of Islam. So it's uh, really moving fast now in development. Alhamdulillah. So I'll I'll have an announcement about genius of Islam very soon. It's a great convo. Glad you enjoyed it. Hope Allah guides onto the right path. Amin. Quran confirms the truth. Instead of contenting us with fallacies, men must work hard in order to attain paradise. It's common sense that such a great reward should demand great effort. Yeah, it does require effort to submit to God and to be humble enough to accept Islam. That's true. Daniel, do you agree with BLM? I don't agree with the formal... Um, BLM movement because it's that's clearly a psyop but with the fact that um, there is and there has been this oppression of the black race in the west that's an undeniable fact uh, racism structural racism I do agree um, with that I don't agree with critical race theory I have a critique of that um, in my video library and on the channel you can check it out I even debated with uh, a proponent of critical race theory um, four or five years ago. But yeah, it's something that's undeniable, like the oppression and the persecution of, of black people. They're not victims in the sense that Owen was saying, like a victim mentality. They, uh, some of the strongest leaders and intellectuals are blacks, black American, Muslims, Malcolm X. Like when we talk about Malcolm X, was Malcolm X a victim? I don't think so. Uh, he was a leader, a strong role model and leader who was fighting a back against the oppression. So we should all uh, benefit from that and, and support, you know, the su fight against that injustice. Yeah, I, I didn't understand, like, we can't, we can't accept any kind of historical genocide or persecution because that leads into a victim mentality like i didn't understand that i think it's pretty clear that there are um victims in history and that doesn't mean that you're defined as being a victim but Mm, no, he's not Muslim. Should have been a conversation about whether or not race and genetics have an effect on behavior. What does Islam say about that? Um, I mean, it's not contrary to Islam to believe that God has created different races. God has created different people and um, they can have certain pro proclivities. Um, that's not something contrary to Islam. It's not even something that's necessarily offensive i don't understand like why that should be controversial the idea that god has created some races to be less than morally less than or weaker or you know in in a negative way i think that's wrong that's completely contrary to islam god might have imbued certain races with qualities that other races don't have like that's within god's uh power and he does this um, you know, to that does create a diversity in the human creation. And this is referred to in the Quran as well, that God has created humanity with different colors and different tongues so that we will know each other, that we will come to know each other. And um, that's something I think that's very beautiful. That's the diversity of life. When these white supremacists, I'm not saying Owen is a white supremacist, but others, uh, ignorant people have this kind of view that, oh, yeah, races are real and this particular race is inferior or they are more predisposed to being evil and committing crimes and committing injustice. I think that's stupid. 
I think that's stupid and it's contradicted by experience, it's contradicted by evidence. Like when we actually look at, you know, the, the history of different races um, and, and different civilizations of different races, it's contradicted um, by that history. It's contradicted by um, also rationality. Like if you believe in God, how can you be racist? I mean, that's, that's why I don't understand. Yeah, I, I really disagree with using the N word and like insulting people on the basis of race. Like that's, it's really jahiliya. It's it's quite ignorant. So I wasn't going to let him just talk like that. But I also understand like where that when you're a comic, like that whole career is about being subversive. It's about like, pushing people and pushing people on taboo subjects and sensitive subjects like that's what comics do and when you're also you have this liberal background where you're taught from a young age that there really is nothing sacred um, other than yourself other than you what you want to be what you want to do uh, what you believe then it's a bad combination so i don't know if you'll ever get over that i hope he does He also is trying to fast. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Waalaikum salam. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, one thing that I said, like, I'm, a, I consider the truth to be sacred. Well, it matters like what do you consider to be the truth like that's an empty statement unless you define what what truth is it's like saying oh i believe in the good yeah everyone believes in in the good they just define good in different ways some people think that the good means uh being a satanist some people think good means whatever degeneracy that's you can't just say i believe in the good you have to define what the good is Daniel, should people be allowed to use their own racial slur? Yeah, I mean, it's there's a difference. Like he was saying, he was making this argument that if you, if black people can say the N word, then why shouldn't I? It's racist if you don't let me say that. And I was making the analogy that, okay, well, that's like saying, oh, you know, because I spank my children or I sleep with my wife, then everyone should be able to otherwise that's discriminatory so muslim science should get reward for best moderator mashallah yeah you did a great job because i don't have i can't well i'm trying to deal with <laughs> owen benjamin uh you know going on his n-word rant um, it's hard to moderate the chat at the same time. So I appreciate Muslim Sion. Also check out his memes, world-class memes. Yeah, Islamically, you shouldn't be using slurs and trying to hurt people on the basis of just their race. But can we... If someone is insulting us, like that's the thing, whole thing with the Hindu dva, that they attack Muslims and they insult Islam, and then we're not supposed to like insult them back. That's not Islamic. In Islam, you can respond in in kind. You can respond in turn. So if they are making a mockery of Islam, then we can make a mockery of of their beliefs as well. He 
you're allowed to blame a whole group and then ignore it totally. That's self-righteous, dude. Which group that I blame? I kept saying over and over again that I don't blame white people as a collective. I said that multiple times. Like, it's not just like when it comes to genocide of Muslims, it's not just whites. Like, who's co committing a genocide right now in, in Palestine? It's not white people. I mean, white people are uh, aiding and abetting uh, through the U.S. government, but it's not primarily white people. Or look at the genocide of Indonesians in the 20th century. Indonesian Muslims were genocided in part by the Japanese. They're not white. Does that mean, like, we hate Japanese people or we collectively blame Japan for that genocide of 3 million Muslims? No. Yeah, I don't know what's the sensitivity with the term white colonialism. Like, it's a historical, like, fact. It's just, like... Persians, I'm Persian, right? Or Iranian. Iranians historically have committed uh, crimes. And if someone points out, oh, this was an Iranian genocide, for example, in 3000 BC or, or 2000 BC, whatever. I wouldn't be offended by that. Oh, don't say Iranian colonialism or Iranian genocide. Like, who cares? Like, that's them. Unless you're saying I'm personally responsible for what people did in a particular piece of land 5,000 years ago, unless you're saying that, I'm not offended. So why are why would whites be offended by white colonialism? I, I, didn't, I didn't really get that. <laughs> Daniel is white himself, so he can insult his own race. Yeah, I hope he understands the difference between a victim mentality and being a victim of persecutions. That was the disconnect uh, part of the discussion. It's not white colonialism. It, colonialism is Christian colonialism. No, white colonialism is something different. It's based off of the Enlightenment idea of whites as a superior race. So you go and you read the Enlightenment thinkers like John Stuart Mill or, um, you know, Alexis de Tocqueville or any of these guys, um, Jeremy Bentham. They believe that white people are superior genetically um, and they have higher IQ. That's why they develop science and technology. And that was the basis for a entire colonial project. That's the main colonialism that that's that's white colonialism. They were not Christian, like they were against actual organized Christianity. They were against the church. The Enlightenment thinkers were against um, the Catholic Church, obviously. They were against any kind of organized religion. That was like the whole point of the Enlightenment. I think he thinks calling it white colonialism, colonialism justifies white guilt and it creates identity politics. Maybe that's why he was mad. Yeah, maybe he had like he had these associations like he might not know. He probably doesn't know what I think about these issues. So he might have thought that I'm just coming at it from a liberal perspective or like I'm trying to play into identity politics. But I told him, like, I don't believe in this idea of white guilt. I wonder why Daniel had him on his show. 
just wanted to talk to him because we had this back and forth on Twitter regarding Aaron Bushnell, the uh, Air Force um, lieutenant, or I don't know what his rank was, but he was in the Air Force and he committed um, self-immolation, burned himself alive as a protest against the Palestinian genocide. And he just condemned it. Like he outright said, okay, this is suicide, this is haram. And he didn't understand why some Muslims were didn't have that condemnatory attitude towards Bushnell, like myself. And I tried to explain to him that, look, uh, we can disagree with suicide and suicide is a sin. It's a crime. He shouldn't have done it. But he was trying to oppose genocide of a people and he didn't want to be complicit in that. And so that's something positive that we can praise. We can praise one aspect of some, something that someone does while condemning another aspect of it. Like we can have that kind of nuance. And that's not hypocrisy. But for some reason, he wanted to insist that it was hypocritical. So that's why I invited him to talk about it. <laughs> and then I just opened up a whole different can of worms uh, as the conversation progressed. Daniel, is it okay to pray 20 rakahs of tarawih? Yes, it's okay. Are people of the book considered kafir? Is that explicit in the Quran? Yes. Yeah, you're people of the book, Ahlul Kitab, but you're still under the broader category of uh, kafir or kuffar the plural of kafir because you still are rejecting the prophet muhammad the final prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so you're still a disbeliever because that's the main thing that you disbelieve in you believe in god that's fine but that's not the whole package you have to believe in the prophet and the final revelation of god as opposed to sticking to the a book yes you're people of the book but the book has been corrupted How should we call Hindus to Islam sincerely? Is there any hope left for them? They hate Islam because of Mughals. How should we invite them to Islam? Uh, there are a lot of Hindus that become Muslim. Um, they really recognize the idea of the rationality of believing in one God as a creator. So focus on Tawheed and that really resonates with a lot of people, obviously, because it's natural. It's the fitrah. Okay, guys, um, so that's two, almost getting two and a half hours. Um, don't see irrelevant points. Yeah, we didn't really get into a discussion of flat earth. <laughs> um, that would have been interesting. Because I don't agree with him on that. But I don't think it's like as important as other issues. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Inshallah, the video doesn't get uh, taken off. Uh, I think we should be fine with the community guidelines, inshallah. But you can like the video, comment, um, and then subscribe as well. That really helps the channel, inshallah. And also, you know, help us continue this work. If you can make a contribution to Muslim Skeptic, that'd be really great. Just go to muslimskeptic.com and there is the donation tab in the um, corner there. Go and make a donation. We'll really appreciate that. Uh, Barakallahu feekum. 
And we will see you on the next one. A lot of good content is coming out soon uh, this week, in fact. So stay tuned and we'll check you later. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.